Welcome to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia for the second preliminary regatta of the 37th America's Cup. This is a first for World Sailing, a professional sailing regatta of America's Cup scale hosted in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A remarkable country boasts some truly spectacular cultural scenery and host to some of the world's biggest sports. Over the next three days, we'll be talking about all things related to racing in red. The Red Sea, red hot competition. It is on the Neom America's Cup preliminary regatta, Cheddar. And this is what it's all about. The America's Cup, a Victorian design trophy made of ornate sterling silver, first awarded in 1851. Now that's 45 years before the first modern Olympics and predates soccer's World Cup. 174 years of history in constant competition. If you're a sailor, it's the first and last word. Win it and you've been there and done it. You're one of the few. The Cup Defenders is Emirates Team New Zealand. They wrestled the Cup off the USA in 2017 and defended it on home turf in Auckland in 2021. Out to stop them though, five top class international challenges. The biggest and the best in sailing. Minds, mechanics and muscle. But, and it's an important but, only one team can win the right to challenge the Kiwis in Spain next year. And the next few days of racing here in Jeddah equals a massive opportunity for them to know what they're all up against. We have six fully professional teams, as big as it gets in global sailing. At this stage, all teams are building their 75-foot race yachts. Thousands of man-hours of design effort, the latest in terms of concepts and technology, the fastest, most technically advanced yachts on the planet. And these are the athletes that will race them. One part purist sailor, one part technician. The cup game is now 100% embedded in leading edge technology. Numbers, details, targets, speed, high stakes, and the pressure to deliver sits on these athletes' shoulders. But that's next year. Over the next three days, all teams will race the AC40 class in eight fleet races, and the two teams who score the most points face off in a winner-takes-all match race. Scoring, quite simple. 10 points for first, seven for second, five for third, then three, two, one. And Shirley Robinson, it's worth taking a quick look at how the Americans won the first challenge. That scoring format worked for New York Yacht Club's American Magic as they went into the final day of the Villanova Regatta in fifth place. And American yeah, Magic off the line. line, what a start. So it was an outside bet that they could climb the leaderboard and challenge for a spot in the match race grand final. But achieve it, they did. The team led by Tom Slingsby and Paul Goodison put on a final day masterclass. That is uh, really clever sailing by the Americans. The scene was set for a humdinger of a final match race between the Kiwi Cup holders and American Magic. Ultimately, the weather gods didn't play ball. This is the race committee, and this race has been stopped. So the win went to the team representing the club that held the America's Cup for 132 years, who, by the way, badly want it back. So USA go all the way and do the business in Spain in September. But just a single point separated them from the Kiwis. In third with an exceptional debut performance, Orient Express Racing Team of France. And a private battle raged between Alinghi Red Bull Racing and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli throughout for fourth and fifth. And a disappointing last place finish for Ineos Britannia. That was Villanova, but now we're in Jeddah on the Red Sea. And all these teams have spent the months thinking about how do you win this next AC40 regatta? The team that won the last one, American Magic, surely, they, the way they celebrated, they were pumped. It meant a lot. I mean, they are effervescent. They're glowing with their newfound confidence. I, I spent a couple of days in Barcelona with them, and that runs throughout the team. It meant the world. And of course, they've got the sports MVP, Tom Slingsby. He is fired up for more. Yeah, I don't think they're the only team that are fired up at the moment. Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, James Spithill and Francesco Bruni handing the keys of the Ferrari over to a new young look team. Going to be, going to be really interesting to see how they go. Every competition loves a dark horse. And if you just have to go back to Villanova and you look straight away, Orient Express Racing. Yeah, look, the French team, I think, did a fantastic job in Villanova, winning the first race there. They'll be absolutely looking forward to doing the same thing here and, and setting the, the bar high for the, for the event here in Jeddah. 
And we are sitting the bar high here on the Red Sea port of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. It's a forward-thinking city that is delivering so much for this second America's Cup preliminary regatta. And everybody is truly excited. The locals are just buying into this big time. They have been so friendly, so welcoming and accommodating to all of the teams and everybody involved in this regatta. And the most important thing, this is about the future of sailing. We are looking forward, not backwards. And having the regatta here is a a huge fillip for Saudi Arabian sailing and my word it is in a magnificent place to be staging a regatta. This is the race committee just over three minutes until the start of practice match race one port entry Italy starboard entry USA. So race management give us the call for practice day number three and it's all about practice racing match starts a pretty good day too Stephen McIver Shirley Robertson Glenn Ashby and Pete Lester on the water and Glenn nice nice day for racing weather wise looks absolutely perfect out there at the moment uh, it's absolutely spot on you know a little bit on the lighter side from what we saw over the last couple of days water a little bit flatter but um, certainly fantastic conditions out there and the teams will be absolutely thoroughly enjoying this practice time on the water Stephen, none of us have raced here before. For the teams, they have to kind of find their feet and the, the nuances of sailing in Jeddah. But uh, for the spectators, I mean, just look at the color of the water. It is something else. And particularly at this time of year, beautiful conditions. Port entry at two minutes and 10 seconds will be Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. And at two minutes, it will be American Magic. As you can see, uh, Ruggiero Tita, Marco Gridoni, the new kids on the block to bring a 90s band into it. Uh, they are loving it. Absolutely, uh, Marco, only 19 years of age as we watch American Magic enter as well on time. This is fantastic practice for these teams. This, this every minute that they do out on the water practicing match racing is gold for next year. And remember, the two sides to the boat, two drivers, two trimmers. So important to get that communication, particularly match racing, when you're watching, you're so focused on your competitor. Briefly onto the water, good afternoon to you, Peter Lester. What are you looking for on this match race start number one? Well, it's uh, the crucial time is when uh, Luna Russell will choose to come back. Uh, well, American Magic elect to lead in. No, they've gone behind. So really it's the push game now for American Magic. It's about time on distance and also time management on distance for Luna Rossa. Beautiful conditions. Walking up the track, I actually like the, the left-hand side. It looks a wee bit more pressure on the seaward side. Three, two, one, board down and driving. They were early coming back yeah, in folks yeah. like this. You know, oh, no, that's a mistake we're from Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Back to that side and, uh, yeah, that's a massive unforced error there. Only 43 seconds to go to the start. They'll be doing absolutely everything they can to get that boat rebuilding speed. Massive advantage to American Magic. Uh, big, big, big shame for Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. They'll be kicking themselves for turning too quick. So at this point in time, American Magic go through their own manoeuvres, knowing how hard it's going to be for Luna Rosa to pick the boat out of the water. Correct. Yeah, American Magic there, massive upper hand there. That's a, a big boat handling error by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Uh, they won't be happy with that. American Magic, all about time on distance now. 15 seconds to go. They'll be looking to build the boat speed, get the boat speed well over targets if they can. So they'll be coming in at a wider angle to the wing and looking to wind the boat up to be over target speed when they hit the line. So, match race practice number one underway and is quite simply advantage American Magic who won the first preliminary regatta in Villanova purely on the back of a the young a young kid's mistake and maybe just a little bit of pressure. They stole the Ferrari as the first race start. It is practice day, Stephen. This is what it's for. Yeah, they'll, be, uh, they'll be feeling a little bit of frustration there. That's not what you want to do in front of your boss, um, is, is stack, the, stack the Ferrari on, uh, on day one. But you know what? Those guys will absolutely bounce back. And this is what practice is all about. It's about pushing the settings, learning how hard you can push the ride height, what you can do and what you can't do, particularly in a pre-start situation. Surely at the press conference this morning, you asked Ruggiero Tita about expectation. And he said, look, there is no expectation, particularly on my Myself. I wonder, though, whether we've seen a little bit of expectation come to light that he just wasn't willing to admit. 
Well, you know, Jimmy Spiddle and Francesco Bruni, they are watching at home. There is expectation, but I think we're being a little bit harsh calling them the kids. Ruggiero <laughs> actually is an Olympic gold medalist. He has been training a lot with uh, Luna Rossa, and, and he knows his way around the AC40. But Marco Gradoni, he's 19 years old. He was World Sailor of the Year, I think, when he was 15. Uh, awesome. But he's brave. Yeah, looking at the turn right here, quite high, getting high. Little pop of the board there, and then bang, down they went. Basically, just pop the rudder elevator out of the water. If you get that rudder elevator close to the surface when it's loaded, it's very susceptible to letting go, and that's exactly what's happened. Too high, no rudder, down you go. Peter, what do you make of that? Yeah, I'd uh, roll it back a little bit more. I think the, the error that they made was was turning back to the start line a little bit early. And uh, if you're coming leading back early, then you're forced to do another manoeuvre. And uh, I thought uh, um, uh, Tom Slingsby really just played that waiting game. Time on distance, sailed over towards the Jetta Yacht Club. And he knew when uh, Luna Rossa turned back that they were early for the line. They would need to do another turn. But my word... I'm sure the, um, the Italians will learn from that one. So American Magic just going through the motions now at the top gate and rounding that in this first practice match race start. They'll take the win there if, we, if we're going to add points, but we're not. And uh, it was just nice and smooth. Calm, collected, very, very strong helming through. Yeah, very measured performance the there others. from American Magic. I mean, these guys have, uh, are no strangers to Matt Tracing. Um, you know, both Paul Goodison, Tom Slingsby and the, and the crew on board done plenty of Matt Tracing over the years. So it was a pretty clinical, straightforward performance from them. A um, bit of a shame for them not to have some healthy competition off the line, but... Trying to find a, a sort of hybrid uh, is not easy. Be clear here. I just go for another 20. The French are coming this way. This shouldn't be an issue. I haven't started yet. We just okay, do it. Okay, I'm going to go board down here. Okay, copy. Happy. You want to jive? Please. Okay, board down. Two, one, board down. Okay, we'll turn up straight out of this. Okay. So we'll start moving on to the uh, next so practice race start. It will be... Orient Express Racing, who were the surprise package of the first preliminary regatta in Villanova Illage Altru, winning race number one and finishing the whole regatta in third position. They'll come on on port entry, two minutes and ten seconds. Then it will be a Lingy Red Bull Racing coming in on starboard entry with two minutes to go. Again, uh, two young teams. Very talented team, the French. They're slightly on the back foot as they, they were late in. They got the AC40 late, and obviously they had to ship it here to Jeddah. They didn't have another boat, uh, so they spent many hours in the simulator getting ready for Jeddah. So going through the motions, we'll wait for the race director's call, and then they will arc up, you might say, and get ready for this practice match race start. Number two on the Red Sea. This is the race committee, just over three minutes until the start of practice match race two. Port entry France, starboard entry Switzerland. Orient Express racing, the French are back in the America's Cup game. Their AC75 being built, designs brought off Emirates Team New Zealand, and uh, which is, you know, sometimes when you think about the big plan, you know, secrecy no more. It's like just go build a yacht and let's see how we can all race them. Yeah, look, to be honest, I don't think the French will end up with uh, a package that's too bad, to be honest. <laughs> it's going to get designed by the America's Cup current champions. Uh, not, a, not a bad way to go, but um, the sailing team certainly uh, haven't done a huge amount of time on these AC40. So, again, these practice races are all important, not just for the sailing team, but for the whole team in general. The show setting up for match race practice start number two here in Jeddah. And port entry, two minutes and ten seconds will be Orange Express Racing. Yeah, they need to make it just on time. A little bit early, French have to slow down a little bit there, which will hurt their entry. They are washing off about eight to ten knots of boat speed. Not ideal, just a little bit overcooked. Had to put the brakes on, and that'll actually give the advantage slightly to the starboard tack boat, a Lindy Red. It's all about time on distance. So important. Ah. 
Oh, well, they had very little choice there, Mid running out of C room. If you had to turn and go back, it's still a lot of time to kill. Right, One minute 15 right. to the start of this race. Yeah, Obstacle course for Halingi Red Bull Racing going around Emirates Team New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming up to one minute now. The boundaries are not that big, so that, that start box is not that big. 55 seconds to go. It'll be interesting to see here what the French do. They'll be looking to come through and actually try and push them behind. Lingi following them around. So interesting tactics here from both boats in a tight boundary. Lingi, Lingi putting themselves in a fairly strong position there. Only 25 seconds to go. French looking for a hook here. Set to kill. 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 Zero. Racing. 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 Clean start by both the Lingi Red Bull Racing and Orient Express Racing. This is the umpires. OCS get behind penalty France. OCS get behind penalty France. <laughs> they were so close. It was such a, a, a lovely, even start there. And so nice to hear the comms actually on both boats. Getting to that start line at speed at the right time. It's not straightforward. No, both teams there doing a, a pretty good job, I thought, of actually getting themselves in position. I think both boats had an advantage and disadvantage there against each other during that pre-start. France now obviously having to tack away to try and clear that penalty. They are behind at the moment. Advantage of Lingi Red Bull Racing coming across to the left-hand band. Penalty here. clear, penalty clear. Interesting to note, though, and if we talk about French coming back into the game and a young crew, or at least some experience on that crew, of course, uh, there was no miss, just it was very calm on board. They knew they were looking, just going about the, there was no sense of, hang on, we've got to, we've got to push this, we've got to push this. I think the, the comms on board there, absolutely key. These guys are starting to really get a feel for each other on how they're actually sailing the boat, the communications cross boat, if you like, um, from the windward side to the leeward side on both tacks. Obviously, uh, an intersection coming up here. I've still got a lingi with quite a good advantage here, but the French sailing their boat really nicely, so there won't be much in this as they cross. A lingi talking about whether to hit the French here, which means tapping in front of them to give them some dirty air. It'll be interesting to see if they go board down here in the next couple of seconds. And on cue, Alinghi tacking right on the face there of the French. The French immediately responding and tacking out to clear their air. That confused there. It's so costly, isn't it, guys? I mean, you saw, we saw the French just tack away instantly. There's no just hanging on there, hoping it would work out. Yeah, Alinghi had a little bit of a quiet tack there, and they, they did well to keep the boat flying. Uh, they, they were nearly touching down, but then they uh, they just had to be patient. Uh, it is practice day, and I see now that the French have actually elected to bail out and are heading down to the bottom mark. It is practice, but what's really illustrated is so small. You can't just sail away, time your run, turn round. You actually have to make some manoeuvres, which is hard. You've got to keep flying, you've got to keep foiling. Uh, it, it's pretty, there's a lot going on in, in those final two minutes. Yeah, what's going to be interesting, I think, uh, when we look at uh, on uh, Saturday afternoon when we get into the match racing, I hope they have the course uh, right in close to the, you know, into the harbour entrance because what we haven't seen is, is that the boats are having to do turns like traditional match racing. We've seen a lot with the America's Cup class boats that they uh, really just go back deep into the box and do a time run. So it was a really a, a bit of a different picture to see uh, circling in pre-starts and it looked good. So the third practice match race start just seems to happen, doesn't it? Defender of, for the 37th America's Cup Emirates Team New Zealand and challenger of record.
Enios Britannia. Skipper Ben Ainsley with some interesting comments made at the press conference this morning, suggesting that it was a bad performance in Villanova. But they were aware of that. And it was a wake-up call, but it, quote unquote, may have saved the campaign. We'll talk about that in just a moment because there were a lot of raised eyebrows from that question from our very own Shirley Robertson as we get ready for race director call. This is the race committee, just over three minutes until the start practice match race three, port entry Great Britain, starboard entry New Zealand. So let's just explain how this works. Mostly on most of the boats, the, the helm to windward is making all the decisions, fed by information from the helm who is to lured. And we're just getting some lovely comms between the two helmsmen in this. So it will be port entry from Ineos Britannia so and also starboard entry will be Emirates Team New Zealand. Two minutes. Bucket chase boats coming up. Glad there's a bit of history here between Three, Ineos and five, uh, Emirates Team New Zealand. Well, what's down. going through my Number mind is that, that instant turn, turn, in, uh, turn, uh, I think it was in Bermuda when you, you had a bit of coming together oh, yeah, in, a, wheel, in a pre start. Certainly some uh, interesting times for both these teams over the uh, over the years, Peter, but coming up to the entry here for Ineos coming on down, basically coming in as they'll be entering fairly shortly here. Still thinking round up tap Yeah. Coming in, watching Emirates Team New Zealand come in, entering on starboard there, both boats. Entering nicely there, so it'd be interesting to see how both boats tackle this. Maybe just a practice race, but every little piece of psychological advantage you can take as far as away we are from the 37th America's Cup will count. Oh, this is great. We're seeing some really, really good manoeuvring here by both boats. So, um, really, really interesting. Going to be, going to be really exciting uh, for next year. What we're going to see on these bigger boats. Happy to go a little slower if you want. Okay, 125. I thought that was a good strategic move by Ineos yeah, there to, with the short, um, with the short start box over right. towards the breakwater to get that yeah, first circle in early. And the response from the New Zealanders is to really go far right, setting themselves up for a time run. So this is really quite a classical free start in terms of match racing. Yeah, Emirates Team New Zealand just not their best manoeuvre there. They'll dig themselves out of this hole, but they have actually had a bit of a mistake there. That'll cost them a little bit. They'll need to get the boat back airborne again as quickly as they can here. Full takeoff call by Nathan Outrich. Andy Maloney calling the sail trim. They should be able to pop again here, which they have, but I'd say big advantage here to Ineos Britannia after that manoeuvre from Emirates Team New Zealand not coming off as well as they would like. You are so vulnerable, aren't you, if the hull's in the water. I mean, you are, your predator is coming for you. Okay, Ten seconds to go to the crossing the start line here. Still for getting off in a, in a solid position here over target speed. Should have the advantage. This is the umpires. OCS get behind penalty GBR. OCS get behind penalty GBR. Well, they knew it, didn't they? We heard uh, Helmsman Giles Scott say it, that they were a little bit over. They get some help from the software, a time and distance back to the line. But in the end, you've got to make that split second judgment about when to pull the trigger. Stand by tack. Two, one. The race certainly not over by any stretch of the imagination. Still only a couple of boat lengths in it. Um, Breeze looks like it's dropped just a little. Ben calling for a fast mode to Giles. That's just a slight press on the jib. We've actually got Emirates Team New Zealand sailing pretty nicely there in a little puff by the looks of things and quite a big, big game there. So it might be a little shifty and puffy out there on the water. Sue Ben Ainsley said at the press conference this morning he felt that American Magic and oh, Emirates Team New Zealand were yeah. a step ahead of the rest of the fleet. And I just wonder, there was a moment there where we saw 
Emirates team New Zealand touching down, able to get themselves back up, get themselves on the start line. Go, away we go. GBR second penalty, uh, haven't taken it first one in one minute. Yeah, Stephen, that's interesting. Any no, the, uh, the actual left-hand side of the track has uh, been a bit favoured pressure-wise, yeah, and it took them an eternity yeah, to wash off that penalty. Ben, ben Ainsley was there, trying to wash uh, uh, the penalty off to get behind right Emirates Team New Zealand. Took a little bit too much time, and Richard Slater, you know, implemented a second penalty. So this has been an interesting little match race. Free start, couple little mistakes, but this is really just a bit of a an appetizer of what we have to come here in Jeddah. Just to explain the, how the penalties work, they need to get 75 meters behind their opponent. So um, to me, it just looks like Ben's just sailing. He's carrying on. They're practicing. This is the umpires. Uh, Jibia disqualified from this race. <laughs> Umpire Richard Slater, how tough could yeah, you be? Richard, do you not think we were quite a long way behind him when they tagged across us by three lengths? Uh, you didn't get to 75, we can look at it after. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, a lovely bit of... Nice bit of banter, hey, Shell? Yes, between them. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, as we said, uh, Benning's there to get 75 metres behind, and it's there's no judgment in it. It's a, a science, and Richard Slater letting them know. Yeah, but don't, but don't you love the attitude? Don't you love the attitude of being going? Hang on a minute. It's just a practice match race study. Still not. We've got to win this. We're going to do this. They're also calibrating, aren't they? The, the software and um, they're getting used to, used to all of that. I'm always surprised by how little rudder appears to be in the water. <laughs> Slightly scary. Yeah, that's uh, that's pushing it, even in these conditions. I mean, uh, the rudder's quite loaded in, in the jibes, and you don't need much of it to get close to the surface, and you can really ventilate that elevator. Um, and if you ventilate right that elevator, potential lay in here. we're in trouble. So we are dialing ourselves up and getting ready for the first of three fleet races on this practice day. It is going to be an absolute ripper. Perfect sailing conditions on Jeddah. The Red Sea for the very first time. Let's get busy then. Emirates Team New Zealand. Well, as we'd expect, this team is stacked with talent. Four athletes who've worked together and delivered on both the Olympic racetrack and in the Cup World. For Jeddah, skipper Pete Burling teams up on the starboard side with trimmer Andy Maloney. He's in charge of speed. And on the port side, Ozzy Nathan Outridge drives back on the control. Bye. A poor performance from Ben Ainsley's outfit in Villanova will certainly have sharpened the focus for Ineos Britannia here in Jeddah. Ben leads the starboard team with Ian Jensen brought in for this event to enhance the speed look. On port, Olympic double gold medalist Giles Scott is partnered by Welsh talent Evan Moore. Alinghi Rebel Racing set up camp here in Jeddah for much of the last month. Two ace of 40s and a plethora of coaching talent hard to push this young team. Skipper Arno Sarafagas, he drives the starboard side with Brian Matro, and across the boat, Max Bachelin, keen to secure his drive for next year, is partnered with the experienced Eve Dutrick. The new young look Italian team of Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli here in Jeddah has some big boots to fill with the left side of the driving being taken on by 19 year old Marco Gradoni and trimming the sails is Umberto Molinari with the right hand side of the yacht being steered by Ruggiero Tita and aero done by Vittorio Bissarro. American Magic have set the bar high winning the first AC40 event in Villanova a couple of months ago. With the experience of Paul Goodison, team with Michael Menninger on the port side, combining with the in-form 2023 World Sailor of the Year Tom Slingsby and trimmer Riley Gibbs on the starboard side, these guys are the team to beat. The French team of Orient Express Racing showed a clean set of heels in race one in Villanova. Can they do the same here in Jeddah? Steering on the left side of the yacht is Kevin Pepinay and sitting behind is sail trimmer Jason Saunders. On the right side of the yacht we have Quentin de la Pierre and Matteo Van Damme on aero control.
Well, it's the perfect conditions for a few practice laps. A warm onshore breeze between nine and 11 knots. Pretty good for testing the machine and shaking any rust off the racing skills. The course, straightforward. Upwind start, up to a gate. Boats can pass either side of the marks before driving full speed downwind to the bottom gate. There will be six speedy legs planned for racing today. So a great day for racing as we get prepared for the first of three fleet races. A lot this closer the to the... Committee. The course for race one is course six, course six. Axis is 290, length is 1.1 nautical miles. Good luck. So c confirming we are racing. Look to the right of the screen. That magnificent uh, feature is the Jetty Yacht Club and Marina. It is a magnificent uh, facility shaped in the sail of a an old dow. Yeah, they used to be traders and fishing are here on the Red Sea, and now they've been replaced by these technologically advanced race race boats. Well, it's certainly nice architecture everywhere you look at the moment, and some brilliant shots as we look to come into the first fleet racing here. Uh, you know, the architecture both on and off the water, um, I think it's pretty nice to look at, to be fair. Earlier in practice race week, which is two days ago, we had some crazy conditions, really choppy, really, really blustery conditions. How much do you think this, this conditions today, we're saying they're perfect, will even the fleet up, tighten it up? I'm so excited about racing. Also, they've had, what, five, six weeks to review Villanova and to learn. I think the racing is going to be a hell of a lot closer than we saw before. Yeah, I think all the teams would have, uh, you know, analysed each other quite heavily, you know, after that event in Villanova. Um, the, the, the cant angles, the trim angles, the heel angles all look like they've tightened up. Everyone's sort of following each other and learning a lot. A little over 60 seconds to go to race time. Let's just go on board and listen to some of the comms going on for the, for the teams as they get ready for this first fleet race start. Going behind the GBR, okay, full drive, okay? Seconds. That many times to kill. Okay, or down. On board a lengthy race here, listen to Arno, Sarah Fragas. Going for a bit two, one, for a bit of a death probably. I think they stay really fast. Yeah. Well, it looks like they're all going to get to that right-hand side of the box yeah. and tack, yeah. line up on starboard and, and really practice that final approach in. Yeah. Yeah, it's Team New Zealand, the first boat attack on the starboard, um, sort of dictating the, uh, the fleet here a little bit of what they're doing. They'll be going bow down to close the gap. Everybody looking to jostle the position there to build speed. Right. Ten seconds to go here. Ineos Britannia in a good position here. Emirates Team New Zealand at the top of the line, probably the in the pole position for the top end of the line, looking like they're getting squeezed out by American Magic there. Not the best start by Emirates Team New Zealand. This is the umpires. OCS New Zealand get behind. OCS New Zealand get behind. And Emirates Team New Zealand they have touchdown as well, so less than perfect start for them in the opening practice of fleet penalty race clear. match. OCS penalty clear. Yeah, it's uh, not, not an ideal start, but uh, it is it is practice racing today and pushing the boundaries is what it's all about. But as we look at the rest of the fleet coming across the left-hand boundary here, Ineos Britannia leading the way out to the left, a Lingi knowing that they have to tack early to clear their air. Interesting uh, interesting bow and bow situation coming out of the boundary. The boat coming out of the boundary, having rights until they intersect outside the boundary with the boats coming across on starboard. 20 seconds to boundary. Starting to slowly build here, Gibby. Yep. 15 to boundary. 8. Go, okay, stand by. 3, slow entry. 4 down. 2, one border. No problem with below. Go, push, 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 push. Push, push, push. Stephen, the push. wind is dropping and you hear the panic in the helm's voice to keep the boat flying. We now have seven or eight knots, which is right on the edge of being easy or very difficult. Yeah, as the breeze drops, um, the, all the fleet sailing on the J2 jib, which is the middle-sized jib of the fleet. So as the breeze drops, almost transitioning into that bigger jib area, but the boats will be sailing with more power at the moment using that smaller jib. Um, if you clean air, once you build speed, 
you're pretty much back to numbers again. So all about sailing the boat accurately here to gain that half boat length, which will make all the difference at the top end of the course to stay here forward. Well, we did we did suggest it was going to be close to fleet race. We certainly got that as we passed the halfway mark on leg number one with Enios Britannia leading Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, the French, the Swiss, uh, American Magic and Emirates Team New Zealand after that touchdown at the start. Yes, it was a bit too engaged. Let's be alive here. I hear faster. American Magic just living underneath a Lingi Red Bull racing there. They've got a little bit of work to do, these guys. They're, they're back, back a little bit there, going through some chopped up air, which is not going to help them. But it's Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, the young team leading Ineos Britannia as we go to the right hand down. Before the jump, the top. Three, two, one, four down. And four down. Press, press, press. Nice. Three, okay. Okay. Maybe up. Two, one, four, two down. Four down. Nice. Four down. Nice. Wider, sorry. More speed, we're missing some knots. Two. Gonna be a right mark. French looking like they've made a slight gain out to the left-hand side of the course there. Pretty much bow on bow with uh, a couple of the boats coming across from the other side of the course here. Glenn, generally the left, I think there's a wee bit more pressure out the side. Um, and that's where the French made a little bit of a gain, but it's still Ineos. I think just ahead of Luna Rossa with the, the French closing in. Interesting intersection coming up here. Luna Rossa will take the right hand gate, as will Ineos. Very, very tight, tight, close racing at the top, quite tightly packed as they come into the top mark. So Ineos Britannia lead the fleet around the top mark for the first time in this fleet race number one on practice day number two before it gets busy tomorrow in points start to count. Orient Express Racing have rather the opposite mark. And they at the moment then go slightly into the lead with the Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli in position three. American Magic position four. Now swapped over to Alingi Red Bull Racing and of course at this point Emirates Team New Zealand trailing the fleet. Yeah, look, I think the French actually had a really nice second half of that first beat, you know, just keeping their nose clear, picking up a nice little lane out to that left-hand side of the course. And they've actually come through and are now actually leading the fleet. So really nice job by the French there. If they can keep extending, they'll be just wanting to put their elbows out and just get the boat going forwards as best they possibly can. So I'm back into that pressure on that side of the course. They've got a bit of cushion as well. There's no one breathing down their neck on that side of the course, so they can make their own decisions about what to do. We're over on the uh, on the side where the French are. They've just jived out of the jive that went a bit soft for them, wind speed wise. And as I look across, Ineos now coming across towards them on starboard. And uh, I think Ineos are probably just ahead. Ineos have had a blinder this first half of this run. They have taken about 150 metres uh, off the Italians. What a good run there. Yeah, they're sailing the boat really nicely on that downwind. Um, they managed to get around the mark really cleanly and uh, get a nice dive in. So a little bit of pressure looking like it's coming down the middle of the course there. So it is not just a steady breeze. There's definitely some puffs and lulls and shifts out there, which the guys are using to get down the track in good shape. Joe Scott, Port Helmsman. Yeah, the handover there from Ben to Giles. Very, very critical, as it is from the sail trimmers as well. That choreography of that manoeuvre, absolutely critical. Certainly in the lighter conditions like this, everything has to be done really accurately to not lose any distance coming out of the dive. We use the term accurately, the word accurately a lot now with these uh, class of boats and also the, the 75s as a sailor. What do you term as accurate sailing? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, the more accurate you can be and the more 
on point you can be with every corner that you do, just like in a race car, being methodical is where you get your lap time down. And it's absolutely about corner speed, keeping your corner speed as high as you possibly can do against your opponents. The synchronicity is so hard to get between the four of them. It is, as we see, a quite a close intersection there. The French coming back at Ineos Britannia. Ineos Britannia setting up for a jibe here as they come down to the bottom end of the course. Looks a little lighter at the bottom than it was previously. The French yeah, have had wheels to lie in this from here. Huh? They've, okay, done, yeah, they've done really well. Great yeah, speed on this run. This is a spicy little race here, this first lead race, as they head to the bottom mark and complete the first leg of six here on the Red Sea and Jetta. Who has advantage? You might say right now it will be Orient Express Racing. Around the bottom mark for the first time, leading Enios Britannia. A yeah, really nice, uh, really nice ley line from the French there coming down. A um, little bit untidy by the British there on what they did. They did sail a lot of extra distance there to take that other gate. So American Magic coming around the, the right-hand mark looking down as well. They'll be looking to try and get some clear air on this next bleak going up wind. Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli about to round the bottom mark for the first time. The Lingi Red Bull Racing, uh, they're on a split tack. They'll take, take, as we see it on our screens, the, the left-hand mark and hit up wind for the, the second time. Peter, is the wind dropping a little bit? I just see that they, they round the marks and they said they're close to touching down. Yeah, I think generally the wind's down a bit, but it's become quite cellular. There's, there's little puffs over the course, and early on it looked left to me. Right now, it's all about if you can get into the pressure. But that bottom mark approach by the French was uh, really nice. Ineos were just a little bit high on the ley line, forcing them to do that one extra jibe, and that created that lead change. Ineos Britannia is certainly uh, cutting a, a nice shape and figure, you might say, here on the scores. Their coach is Rob Wilson, who is uh, lis listening in. Rob, what do you make of your progress so far in this fleet race? Uh, you know, it's a good, uh, good start, good first beat. Um, we got kind of punished just at the end of that run, uh, just missing that lay. Um, so we need to just uh, dig into that. Um, but yeah, it's keeping the boat rolling and, and nailing the manoeuvres. Um, but uh, reasonably happy with the boat speed right now, um, which has is, is definitely been a, an area we're working on. Uh, Rob, uh, Glenn Ashby here in the commentary booth. You won't be too harsh on the guys for that ley line miss, I'm sure, mate. You, you'll let them off that one. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it's frustrating, but it, it's blooming hard out there. Um, it, it is quite patchy. The chop's not too bad, um, but you know, you, you know well. Like if, if you don't get the attachment going quite right, then uh, it, it's kind of 10 degrees different on the exit. Thank you for your time, Rob. Appre Rob appreciate it. Enjoy this race. Thank you. Looks good, doesn't it? Surely in Os Britannia. So much for the press conference, saving our campaign. They look really good. I wonder who is shucking and driving to be in today this morning. I, I think there was <laughs> words perhaps after Willanova. They seem to find a, a bit of pace. I mean, very similar to conditions to be saw in Spain, and and they've come out of the blocks this is here. The race a little we bit are extra. moving the lure gate, shortening the course to 0.9 nautical miles. Yeah, just with that uh, wind speed dropping there a little bit, uh, Melanie Roberts there and uh, Ian Murray just deciding to shorten the course up a little bit, just bringing those marks a little closer together as the boats are going a little slower now to hit that target time. Um, of the global race. A lot of chat in the boat park about working on, you know, can tangles. It's, it's something like 15 degrees, isn't it? You can adjust and also incorporating the heel. And as the winds drop, we just begin to see the boat starting to heel the boat on the on top of that windward side. Yeah, as the breeze gets a little lighter, the, the cant angle will go further underneath the boat um, and the heel of the boat will be slightly more to windward as the breeze does get a bit lighter. So you'll, you'll notice a, a global trend change with the whole fleet as the breeze does drop down a little bit. American Match was strong in their practice match race start. It's probably worth having a listen to their onboard comms to see what's going through their mind as they go in the second upwind leg. Oh, 
last year. Yeah. Take me all the way. I'm going to say it was. Happy to say you bring her up. Yeah. So take me all the way. She'd make late eight. Yeah. So, nice so important to pick that ley line so correctly. Out. If you're yeah. a little yeah, bit short on it, and you have to slow the boat down, like a massive yeah. chance of, of ending up with the hull in the water. So, coming to the top mark for the second time, yeah, who's in go. control? Let's take, take a look. Uh, Orient Express uh, Racing, uh, take the left-hand uh, mark. Uh, Here is a real battle going on at this particular uh, point. Uh, Enios. Britannia, American Magic, both rounding the mark, heading on the downwind leg. Yeah, quite a tightly bunched fleet as they've come up to the top end of the, the course here. Emirates Team New Zealand still trying to claw their way back to the fleet. They did have a pretty ordinary start and they'll be slowly chipping their way away, but um, a lot of dirty air to chop their way through there, which is not helping them at the moment. As we look at on the tally, though, they've chipped quite a bit away. You know, they, they certainly have. They're sailing their boat really, really well, but um, you've got to get off the start line to give yourself a self a chance. They'll keep working away at it, but um, the race is very much coming to a close on this uh, final downwind. Downwind leg now in this fleet race. Number one of three today on the Red Sea, Peter. Yeah, the boat that's made a move, uh, certainly up that second one will beat was American Magic, but uh, commentators curse, they've just done a jive and they've lost the, they were in the lead, but it looks to me like the French over here on looking down the track on the, on the right have regained the lead. American Magic electing to go around the right hand top mark, but the pressure was in the, uh, looking down the course on the, on the left and that meant that American Magic have been passed on the leg to the finish by Orion. So Orient Express Racing, remember this was the team that won the, the first race in Villanova, the first true race. Remember, we are practice racing today. Their coach is Thierry Douillard. He joins us now. Thierry, you'd be you'd pretty happy with the way your team is sailing at the moment. Yeah, pretty happy that we wait the end of the, of the races. Uh, nice, Terry. It's uh, Glenn Ashby here. Uh, Terry, you guys won the first race in Villanova. What do you think is going to happen this one? Do you think the boys can do it? We'll see, eh? Hey? Maybe not after yes, that job. Maybe not after that job. So before I could tell you straight away, yes. Now it's more complicated, for sure. But it's a journey. Nice, mate. It's a journey. Nice, mate. Thanks for your time. Yes, we'll leave Thierry as we have just... Uh, well, that's, sometimes they call that the commentator's curse, don't they, Shirley? And they touch down straight away. You've got a figure for them. Don't start that, Stephen. OK, Come sorry. Right. Sorry. Right. Backing out. So, American Magic coming down to the bottom here. Nice job by them. And American Magic go round and lead the fleet. And the next upward leg, there you can see Ineos Britannia trailing behind them. Take the same mark. Alingi Red Bull Racing firing onto the opposite mark. Three, two, one. But now Flatwood. And there's Orient Express Racing. He's encouraged them back up and flying. It just shows how much you lose when you do a, a bit of a mistake in a manoeuvre. You go from being comfortably in the lead to right back in the thick of it again and struggling to uh, keep clear air. So, Alinghi Breedball Racing, nice clear lane of breeze out there to the right-hand side of the course, as does Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Uh, be really interesting to see how both folks come in from either side of the course here. I'm not sure if you've seen anything on the water there, Peter, that would suggest anyone would come out in front of the, of the other there. When I'm at the bottom of the course looking up, and that's where we're at the bottom mark gate, um, I look up towards the top mark, it looks a little bit greener, it looks a little bit more fresh towards the, the, um, towards the left. And the boat that's impressed me in terms of the overall race, someone that's got pace, is Magic. American Magic have uh, whittled away at this one, and I look at the race in its entirety, what boats are moving through the field and what boats are struggling to keep on the pace. And for me, American Magic look like they've got a very, very nice setup in this condition. Got some great onboard shots here of the guys 
sailing the boat here on the port hand side of the boat. Paul Goodison on the handlebars there doing a good job, getting some great information from the leeward side there from Tom Slingsby looking out the window there with his shiny goggles on as they go into a manoeuvre. Tom taking over the wheel right on the face of Ineos Britannia there. Quite a good gain to the right hand side of the course here from, from my eye. American Magic, Ineos Britannia, the first protagonist all the way back in 1851. America, Great Britain. Really sailing their boat well, the Americans here. Very, very accurate on the heel control with the trimming. You can see the traveler moving back and forth there, the mainsail working in and out there, just keeping the heel super, super accurate. The more accurate you can keep the heel of the yacht, the better the performance is. So getting that right is absolutely key for, for top speed. Well done. go past this on the box. No home. I don't have the box again. Yeah. When you go to American Magic's base, they yeah. have the trophy yeah. from Villanova in the canteen. Stand by. <laughs> Great Green. big Two. trophy so that everyone can see it the every day at lunchtime. They say you're only as good as your last regatta, but uh, these guys have managed to dig their way back into contention for this first game. practice race here. Um, um, at the moment, they're going to... Tom calling a big game to Ineos there, so it is puffy and shifty out there. Us. So we're going to see another yes. lead change yes, go for it. Just here in practice race okay. number one. Okay. And if we are correct, it will be Ineos Britannia. USA really, really close there to spinning out, um, losing the rudder. This is the going uh, penalty GBR get behind USA. Penalty GBR get behind who's, USA. Who's well, we so might get a chance to see that again, but it looked like they attached really close. And remember, there's a, an imaginary rhomboid ar around the boat. Let's keep going. How are we doing, boundary here? Boundary at nine. Okay, four down here. So here's the penalty. Well, Ineos came, well, they look, came right across the front. The Americans had to, but had to take some kind of action. Hardly had any rudder to do it. And nearly a, a massive collision. Yeah, look, that was actually uh, really, really close. I don't think Ineos realised that uh, America actually didn't really have much steerage there. You heard Tom struggling with the steering here. You're watching how close the rudder is to the water, and there it goes, let's go. Boat going straight. That very, very could have been close to a T-bone there, so just enough gap in between the boats there, but actually the penalty, in actual fact, as this umpire... The umpire's uh, second penalty, GBR. Uh, we understand you may not do it, but second penalty, GBR. As we've heard from Richard Slater there, um, the penalty ultimately going to uh, Ineos Britannia. We heard the panic in their voice. And remember, that windward helmsman, Ben Ainsley, in that instance, he can't see to Lewis. He cannot see the boat there. Uh, so it all came as a bit of a surprise, I think. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I think they, uh, the boys on the Lewis side of the boat there would have uh, been a bit shocked to see the bow of the American Magic boat so close to them then. But that's what happens when you, uh, when you spin out. This is a finish down here. So as we come to the finish of practice race number one, it will actually be the second team practice that will unofficially take yep. this practice race with a penalty hanging over any of Super Britannia's head, but they will cross the line first. And regardless of it being a practice race, it, they will gain huge confidence out of that performance. They'll be reminded, of course, of the penalty by umpire Richard. So as he said, you would have heard him say, I oh, know you're probably not going to take it, but that's the way it goes. American Magic. 
Well, we'll come home two, second, but we'll give them a tick and say that's first place. If it was a real race, and they'd get the 10 points, and they'd be pretty happy about that. He's a huge gain to them on the right. Yeah. And just as we come in, we I think you're ready for racing, there. having to put the brakes on really with Luna yeah, Rosa Prada Pirelli. Boy, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, they came in and hit, they hit the anchors pretty the quickly, didn't they? Like they did. That was a really close finish there. It was uh, really nice. Emirates Team New Zealand making a slight gain on the uh, the downwind against uh, the French. I think the French may have had a, quite a bad manoeuvre at the top end of the course there and unfortunately going from leading the race to maybe bringing up the rear in this one just through a couple of boat handling errors, which is a real disappointment for them. So we'll give them a win by half a length or maybe a nose and uh, horse racing terms, but there you go. That's the completion of fleet race number one, practice number one on Day three of racing, practice racing here on the Red Sea in this magnificent Middle Eastern city of Jeddah. But in East Britannia, they're going to be happy with that, aren't they? You think back to the event in Spain, they just went backwards through the fleet. It was painful to watch. And, and even when things didn't quite go their way, they managed to put the foot down and, and get the boat going again. So let's take a look back at this opening race, shall we? Just take you some of the, the review of the race and how it unfolded. in the pole position for the top end of the line, looking like they're getting squeezed out. Didn't down. unfold well for Emirates Team New Zealand at the start. There, the yeah, start yeah, look, they were just a little early there on the start, got boxed out, and unfortunately couldn't even make it through the line. So that really set the, the race up for Emirates Team New Zealand. Ineos Britannia getting off the line really cleanly, and that effectively set them up. Did a really nice job here at the top of shutting down the course. Just keeping it simple there as they came in. The French making a nice gain from the right-hand side of the course coming into the top. Well, the French made a great game down that left-hand side and we're right back in it until this moment. Hall in the water and just took forever to get going again. And the penalty here at the top mark. In Britannia not keeping clear of American Magic here. Umpire Richard Slater slamming the penalty on In Britannia at the top there. Well, they still had a, a penalty to do, but uh, a great race for the British team who were really struggling in Spain, and, and they'll take a lot from that. They've got their wheels back on. Yeah, they will, there will be a lot of happiness on Ineos Britannia, but uh, the question that remains, what do we think the key moment was in this opening practice race? And I think we're looking at it right now. Yeah, I think for me, just uh, hearing uh, Tom Slingsby's voice there as the boat was going straight with that rudder ventilated, you see the wash out the back as the rudder shaft let go and they carried on straight. That's not a nice feeling when you're on the handlebars. And uh, I think that was a key moment for me in this race. Too close for comfort. Shit. I'm sure when any skipper says to his, uh, his crew, uh, rudder issues, you'd be, you'd be slightly panicky. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to, um, you know, sometimes uh, go for the change of underwear bag, but uh, in these conditions, not overly stressful for the guys on board. But uh, no, I think at the end of the day, a loss of rudder or a loss of steering in any vehicle is, uh, is generally not that, that well, well enjoyed. Tom Slingsby's voice is not normally that high pitched. No, Tommy's a pretty cool, cool cat for most of the time. So uh, yeah, he was got a little bit animated there. Yeah, you don't become World Sailor of the Year for nothing, do you? He's an incredibly talented individual as Tom Slingsby, one of the twin helms on American Magic. As we take a look at the race summary from Fleet Race Number One, a practice race here in Jeddah. Very, very similar amount of manoeuvres there by most of the fleet. I think the average speeds as well, very, very similar, and the flight time all basically in the 99 percent range so the boat's fully foiling all around the course the slightly less than 100 percent was just a couple of touchdowns there just as the boats were getting out of a couple of the maneuvers so that completes fleet race number one we will be moving here towards fleet race number two this is all building up to tomorrow when official racing starts in the second america's cup preliminary regatta look at it this is where we are Jeddah on the red sea in the middle east saudi arabia 
So for the first time in 172 years, the world's top sailors are racing here on the Red Sea in the second of these three preliminary regattas leading up to the 37th America's Cup. Six nations, you know them, New Zealand, Britain, Italy, America, Switzerland and France, all hoping to get their hands on a piece of America's Cup history. Six teams are hoping to become the next holders of the legendary trophy. One already has the cup, that's Emirates Team New Zealand. With 11 campaigns and four wins since 1987, the Kiwis have become the team to beat. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup. They're the defender, having won on home waters in 2021. Their mission now, an unprecedented three-peat. To do it, they'll have to fend off one of five possible syndicates. The challenger of record is Sir Ben Ainsley's Enios Britannia. Sir Ben returns for a third time on a quest to bring the cup back home. After it sailed away across the Atlantic in 1851. It's an almighty task, but neither Sir Ben nor his backer Sir Jim Ratcliffe are built to back down. Could this finally be the Brits' year? They are not the only team with an empty America's Cup trophy cabinet. The New York Yacht Club was its home for 132 years. But the Cup hasn't been sighted since the 80s. They were back last time out, but things didn't go their way. So this time, American Magic team boss Terry Hutchinson has a point to prove. But no one needs to settle a score quite like the Italians, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. They've been trying to win the Cup since 2000. Until he does, team principal Patrizio Botelli just won't quit. The Prada CEO returns for his seventh attempt. Is this finally his time? Against all odds, back in the year 2000, the Swiss won the Cup in their first attempt. A feat matched only by the Cup's original winner, America, in 1851. Billionaire backer Ernesto Bertarelli has a history of assembling elite sailing squads. This time, he's gone for youth. A lingy of this cup's unknown quantity. Write them off at your peril. And from the newest to one of the oldest. A constant presence since 1970, the French are back. But it'll be an uphill battle for Orient Express Racing, last to enter and playing catch up. It's an exciting squad of sailing talent that might just surprise. So the stage is set, and the journey to the 37th America's Cup begins. And that 37th America's Cup is 10 months away, where they'll be sailing the big boats, the big buses. 75-foot AC-75s, which are just magnificent to watch at speed. Mind you, magnificent is that building, the Jetty Yacht Club and Marina building. Magnificent on the Red Sea it is today. That's the Jenna Kornish Formula One circuit. That is one of the fastest Formula One circuits in the world. And you are looking at some of the fastest 40 footers in the world. And I think the AC 75s in 10 months time in Barcelona, Spain will be probably faster than these. And that, that just excites me. I got, I got goosebumps, Glenn. Yeah, the AC 75, they're a big bus compared to these AC 40s. Um, you know, sailed with a crew. Um, they are a big boat and um, they are very, very fast and very, very powerful. So the speeds that we will see out of those ACF-75s will be phenomenal next year. A, a lot lighter too. The Cyclors are back, so they will fly like never before.
Yeah, there's going to be some uh, some some big power plants on these boats that are going to be pushing uh, pushing some oil pretty hard, and um, you know some slightly different uh, rules this time with the AC75. Slightly longer span foils, a little bit lighter, getting rid of the code zeros and getting rid of some winches, going to a self-tacking jib. Quite a few little changes. They're going to be really good next year. But this is such a big tease, and that's what we love, a big tease, because there's going to be immaculate racing in Barcelona, Spain. OK, time for a quick cash relation, I think. Uh, the America's Cup is governed by a, a simple document. It's called the, the Deed of Gift. It was written in 1857 and calls for a friendly competition between nations while giving the defender all the rights. In 172-odd years that followed, the America's Cup has captivated the rich, created heroes and, yes, shattered dreams. To win the America's Cup, it's one of the toughest things in, in world sport. We are looking at something that is in, similar to putting someone on the moon. It's a bit of an obsession, I think, for a lot of us, the America's Cup. Then to be given an opportunity to be a part of it and to race in it is a huge honour. Made from sterling silver and weighing just over 14 kilograms, the old mug has a silver value of just over 12,500 US dollars. But to many, it's priceless. If you're fortunate enough to get to the point of getting to hold that trophy up and fill it full of champagne and, and drink out of it, it tastes pretty damn good. 1851 is the year it all began. A sailing race around the Isle of Wight. A radical yacht called America beats the British on home waters and takes the trophy back to the United States. The America's Cup predated the modern Olympics. The America's Cup predated the Civil War. It predated, you know, all these milestones of world history that have impact on our lives here today. The old mug has always attracted larger-than-life characters, captains of industry, commanders of commerce. Skipper John Bertrand, you and the crew of the Australia 2 have shown us the stuff of which Australians are made. Yeah, the New York Yacht Club held the America's Cup for 132 years and they successfully defended it 24 times over those 132 years until 1983 where Australia 2, through the clever design of Ben Lexon and a great sailing team, uh, unbolted the old mug from 44th Street. Since then, the Americans and the Kiwis have both won the Cup four times, the Swiss twice. I think the cup is such a sought after trophy because it's so hard to win. Everything in it is stacked for the defender. It's just absolutely ridiculous that the winner gets to make the rules and the winner's winners into the final. Coming up, boys. The thing I really love about the America's Cup is that, that technology side, you know, with innovation, you know, really coming together at a set timeline towards a set goal. Next year, the old mug will fly to Barcelona, Spain, where the British, Italians, Americans, Swiss and French will fight for the right to take on Emirates Team New Zealand. Winning three America's Cups in a row by a single team hasn't been done before, to my knowledge. This team's up for it. Hope we can do it. It might be worth just a few thousand dollars in silver, but a rich history has made the America's Cup sailing's most treasured prize. If you're fortunate enough to pull it off, it's just one of those life-defining moments that you never forget. So, they're almost at rest, aren't they? There's Emirates Team New Zealand. Alongside them, Orient Express Racing. Preparing for in about six minutes the second fleet race on this practice day here on the Red Sea in Jeddah, the second America's Cup preliminary regatta brought to you by Neom. What did we learn from the first race? I know we're a long way off on the big show. What did we learn in the first race? Well, first of all, I'm going to mention the VT with all the trophy lips. <laughs> we're sitting beside a man here <laughs> who has done just that, and we saw him quite a lot. I mean, what, does the, what is that moment like? Oh, look, it's an unforgettable experience. You know, it's one of those, as, as Jimmy said there on the VT, I think it's, it's one of those experiences in your life that you, you never, ever, ever forget, and there's nothing that can really compare to it. And 
there's those that have won it and there's those that haven't and I just am very fortunate to have worked with a, a great group of people over the years that have won it together. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm going to push you a little bit harder because the one word that you used to make, and I know where Shirley's going with this because I, I can't imagine what it would be like, but did I not? Did you not mention to me that one, one of the first thoughts was relief? Look, absolutely. After a, a, a four-year campaign, the first thing you feel as you cross the finish line is an absolute sense of relief that you've, you've managed, you know, with the wider team to, to get the job done and execute your part of the program, and it, it really is a wonderful feeling, followed by a few days of, uh, of, of sore heads and, and tiredness, but um, it's a wonderful feeling and something that stays with you forever. But it must... The build-up must... It must drain you. We're, we're 10 months out from the start of the 37th America's Cup in Barcelona, Spain. And when well, you're going through these routines, you never had this routine before. You were just practicing and practicing and practicing. Does it, does it, are you almost drained by the time you get to the first race or, or the match in your case? Look, it is, it is a very draining experience. Um, it's a very enjoyable experience all at the same time. So, you know, 12, 14, 18, 20 hour days sometimes, particularly for the shore team, um, you know, coming into the racing itself is, is, is not uncommon. And that's what you sign up for. You know, it is an absolute passion. Um, it, it's, a, it's a lifelong passion for a lot of people. And I think to ultimately get there as a team is, uh, is very, very special. And of course, you have to remember, it's not just the sailors' hard work. There's a team of, of 150, 200 people also putting in those hours. But as a sailor, you have to deliver. Absolutely. I mean, as a sailing team, you're just a, a very, very small cog in a really, really big wheel. And there's a huge amount of moving parts going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of unsung heroes within every team in the shore crew, the design team, the marketing team, the girls in the office. Everybody, you know, has a huge influence on how the whole program runs. And it's a very, special, very, very special program to be a part of. Paul Goodison referenced that in the press conference this morning here in Jeddah. He said, what was the what did the win in Villanova mean? And he instantly said, it was really important for the wider team, not just those on the boat and the numbers that they, they were talking about, 100, 150 people that put in ridiculous hours to make sure that they and their capacity in these boats can do their job. And it, it, says, it says a lot about, and I know you're a big team player, the ethos of where they're going. Well, I actually spoke to one of the designers at American Magic. And, you know, they're inside, aren't they? Like, you know, 18 hours a day working on data. He said to me, we knew at that moment, if we build a boat that's up to speed, they will deliver the cup. Uh, and what a, what a feeling that must have when you're working so hard towards next summer. Let's go onto the water. Peter, we've just been talking about what impressed folks most in that first race. Who did you like the look of? Um, I, I, I tended to look at the boat, so in terms of the results, the result, but who, who's moving through the field, who wasn't? American Magic, for me, at times looked like they could keep their boat motored and, and Spitz, uh, certainly on that second windward beat, made some nice gains to um, a lead at the top mark. Big improvement by uh, based on that race from uh, Ineos Britannia, I thought they look like they've found the, the key to the lock to, to open the door to sail these 40s. Um, and, and then the, still a little bit of inconsistency, but, but a lot of positives from the French. Uh, they had their moments, but, but they had that touchdown at the bottom mark. So, look, there's, lot, there's a lot going on. Uh, it was a bit hard to get a bit of a handle on Emirates Team New Zealand after their shocker of a start. But they were certainly closer at the end of the race than they were at the beginning, at the beginning of the race. So um, th that was sort of how I view the fleet. Um, big learning curve for Luna Rossa, for the, the, lot, the, you know, the young Luna Rossa crew. But um, uh, I think, again, they will, they'll have learnt from that and they'll be loving the stuff. It's like this in the med. Peter, quick update on the conditions for fleet race number two. Yeah, conditions of uh, it's it, it's now starting to look a little bit changeable, a little bit sort of a little bit patchy out to the left. Um, I see we're set up for uh, six legs. The wind out of 290. I've got it around a little bit more left than 290, but quiet, and and that short 0.9 of a nautical mile. Um, so. Uh, it's just as we get sort of later in the afternoon, um, I, I think this one will be tricky. It's it's very cellular. It seems looking over the course, I'm not seeing a, a nice even flow of green uh, uh, colour on the water. I'm seeing patches of breeze on the water. And it's about um, joining up those patches that the leading boat will need to do if they're going to take race two out. As we take a look at the Lee Rebel Racing and Emirates Team New Zealand, Glenn, now, 
they'll need a big improvement. They'll, they, they will not have been happy with that start. No, no, look, they, they won't, obviously, and um, they'll be doing everything they can to, to make amends for that. Um, you know, the start in these boats is tricky. They were sort of the first boat leading out to the right-hand side of the boundary. Their first boat attack on starboard, and really, you know, American Magic sort of lined them up, if you like, and, and sat in underneath and, and locked them out from quite an early early point of time. So they'll be wanting to do a bit better job, and um, I'm sure they will this next time round. Did you get the sense that they were all sort of trying to shuck and jive, or were they just trying to be careful with their boats? No, no, look, I mean, in these conditions, it's all about winding the boat up to as maximum speed as you possibly can before you actually get to the start line. So each team was very aware of where the other boats were, but obviously trying to build their speed as best they could to hit the line at max pace. We're watching them now have a few practice runs at it, you know, checking the time and distance, having a go, just just checking in, really, and with the, with only 2 minutes 40 to go, they've got a, a couple more runs left. This is the race committee. The course for race two is course six. Course six. Axis is 290. Length is 0.9 nautical miles. Good luck. So now let the fun begin. Fleet race number two, unofficially won by that boat right there, Enios Britannia. It was followed home by American Magic. You never want to win the practice race. <laughs> it's unlucky, isn't it, Glenn? Oh, they do say that it is unlucky, but um, yeah, you can have some superstitions. But at the end of the day, I think uh, Ben and Giles and, and the team on board there will be very, very happy with getting around the track in good shape. The, these boats are so quick. How hard is it to be time or distance with a 140 to go to get to, get, to get to the line? Yeah, the guys will be uh, looking at bringing the boats around now. You'll see some boats starting to come into shot here. American Magic putting themselves in a sort of a, a leading position, if you like, keeping clear air, dictating ultimately their start. Emirates Team New Zealand, Aligi Red Bull Racing. Quite nice time on distance This is the there. umpires, penalty Switzerland. Boundary penalty, penalty Switzerland. So Lingy Rebel racing there, going out of bounds at some point in the entry there. They will have to pay that penalty off at some point after the start, which will be a problematic for them. Well, I will say a bot start. Struggle to build. Okay, the French going for a port start. You can see them just getting to the left-hand side of that box. It's a good option, isn't it, the port start? You get to the right-hand side of the course. Pick your own moment to go back on starboard. Uh, yeah, it, it can work. Emirates team New Zealand in a similar position to race one. I think we probably want to be going the other way, right? Or uh, American Magic, uh, really, really, really slow manoeuvre there. It's, uh, they're going to be in big trouble getting off the line here with only 35 seconds to go. They've got a massive issue there. They won't be happy with that. As we're looking, uh, coming into sure the start here, all the, way off. the teams that look the best to me, I think, are Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, in good shape there, there, building speed, looking good. Yeah. Emirates Team New Zealand winding the boats up here. The French also in good position. So uh, I've almost got the French actually in a, a really strong position there coming off the line. Luna Rossa well over target speed as well. So they'll be happy with getting off the line like that. OCS Italy, OCS Italy, get behind penalty. Pulled the triggers the fraction earlier. I gave them the commentator's curse as well. So <laughs> apologies, uh, Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli on my behalf. So we're away in fleet race number two. And once again, Orient Express Racing show the rest of the fleet complete. how to do it. Italy still has a penalty. So, Ineos Britannia, in my eyes, are actually uh, Italy, sailing the OCS penalty, it's getting behind New Zealand. Big penalty. Ineos Britannia sailing quite nicely out of the right hand side of the course. We cannot there. see our line, we have to go behind New Zealand. Correct. Another 40 metres to go. Thank you, Italy. Penalty clear. 
Richard Slater there just confirming that the penalty is clear there. And Eos Britannia there in pretty good shape. Emirates Team New Zealand actually just working a slightly higher mode here. So Nathan Outridge there. The race is right now, but if you get any slower, we are at risk of someone like bowing us. Nice, great comms there from Nathan uh, on the opposite side of the boat there to Peter Burling. They'll be just threading the eye of the needle here in the Britannia to hold on. And Emirates Team New Zealand the same, trying to hold on, not getting rolled. So it'll be a real game of cat and mouse and threading the eye of the needle across to the left-hand boundary. Looks OK for Leyline. Yeah. What's uh, interesting there, Emirates Team New Zealand able to sail always. out the, yeah, from uh, uh, underneath to Ineos Britannia. That was uh, sure that a, a really uh, patient period. Uh, Nathan Outridge was too high. We okay. run the risk of being leave our tap uh, by the boats coming 20. across on port, but I think there the New Zealand has showed very, very good composer, composure to sail around and out from underneath Ben Ainsley and his team. Well, we see Ben Ainsley and his team no had to this. tack away, but I think when it's this Another light, Glenn, it's very hard to hold, hold that windward position. You are getting, you know, turbulent air coming to the to the back of the sail. It's really difficult. You are even being quite to windward um, of the leeward boat. You are actually sailing in a slight header or, or, or a slight bad angle of breeze, so you can only live there so long. It'll be quite interesting how Alinghi Red Bull Racing come across compared to Emirates Team New Zealand here. Almost bow on bow as we come across. So very, very interesting to see who'll have the advantage here coming into the top part of the course. If you were on the boat, what would you be doing? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Winning. A... We'd be winning, <laughs> obviously. You can see the breeze coming down the course there. They'll be talking about it. We usually seem to listen on board here to what they'll take to the top of the course here. Lovely controlling move there from the Kiwis. So Emirates Team New Zealand is around the top mark in the number one position, followed by a Lenghi Red Bull Racing, and it will be Orient Express Racing. No, 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 Rosa Prada Pirelli. And that was Orient Express Racing in position three. There's your podium right now uh, for race number two as they hit on the downward leg for race number two. Yeah, all very important to get these manoeuvres cleanly, particularly this first jive, getting out of the corners there cleanly and getting back up to speed again. Also important, these manoeuvres. Nice, clean, tidy manoeuvre there by Emirates Team New Zealand. They'll be looking to really try and extend. Get the Pete calling a faster mode. I think it's the right call. They've, they've really got to try and get across the bow of the French there. They'll be all about going forwards here, not necessarily down the course. Marginal across on the French here. We'll pace it up. It's about to get better for us. You've got heaps on the angle. Maybe we're looking super strong on Tracy, but I don't know. Uh, we're good, we're good. Getting a header from now. I think they just had a click more pressure with the right turn. Yeah, I think we'll get the gain on the next one. Yep. What mark are you thinking about? I'm thinking one for a little right. Lovely commentary from Nathan Outridge. I mean, they're definitely little seeing bit, a little yeah, bit more degrees. pressure on that right-hand side of the course. And they're happy now to take it across there, get the pressure, and then jive back. Yeah, great, great call. I think it was all about, you know, getting across the bow of the French there and really extending down that side of the course. I think what had happened there, Nathan actually saw that little sail of breeze, and they're just putting their nose into it now. A little bit more pressure, good angle for Emirates in New Zealand. It's showing uh, good pace down this clear. But as we saw in race one, the French are really strong in this condition as well. Oh, and a big oh, touch down there. The umpire's the French. Curse. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's that's going to be painful for quite a while. Emirates Team New Zealand, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, and Lunarossa Prada Pirelli all pulling off their manoeuvres nice. But watching the French here, oh, 
Oh, just getting the board up a bit earlier and getting a bit of windward heel there, this touching the down. Umpires. Boundary so penalty painful. France. Boundary penalty France. So over at Team New Zealand at running the bottom mark. Race management, race management, France. In France. The front, and a Lingi Red Bull Racing and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. You heard the comms on board as they were coming on that downward leg. Very assured, very confident, knowing exactly where everything was. No rush to Penalty down, clear, yeah. front. The Lingi Red Bull Racing around the bottom mark, heading up for the upwind leg. And there comes Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. How things change. In the, in the space of one practice race, it was Emirates Team New Zealand in the last race with the poor start. They were trailing the field. Now it will be, well, well I don't want to see any else Britannia, but down the back park who had the, the terrible start was uh, American Major. Yeah, race one, it was Team New Zealand that uh, didn't get off the start line well, and uh, in that next one, it was actually American Magic. So it just shows you how tricky it is to get these boats off the line in these conditions. They'll be working hard to try and chip their way back into the fleet here. This will be a real test for American Magic to see how they can actually sail back into the fleet. So it'll be interesting to listen to see what these guys can do. The French will cross you. So, Ineos Britannia, the leader in the last race, seems to have, uh, feels like the handbrake's on, surely. Yeah, unfortunately, a big touch down there. It's a tight course also, Glenn, isn't it? The boundaries, quite light winds, pretty marginal. It is. Easy and to make a mistake. It certainly is, and, and one touchdown is just so costly in these conditions. So, uh, unfortunately for Ineos Britannia, we another did, we touchdown. We deal with very small margins here, aren't we? Hero to zero in the blink of an eye. Feels like for air, we should probably clear out quite soon. Okay, stand by. So they're well over halfway. Take a look at what's going on. The average speed that they're running at the moment. Emirates Team New Zealand just under 26 knots. Alinghi Red Bull Racing just under 26 as well. And uh, Italy is the, the quickest the quick uh, AC40 at the moment. Beautiful. You can see those top three boats actually extending away from the boats behind. Just sailing their boats that little bit better. I think the Red Bull Racing have been here for a month. They set up a whole new base, actually just near where we're all living, just across the road. Uh, and I brought in quite a lot of people to, to help them. I spoke to I spoke to one of them who said, actually, they've got a, a lot faster. So, and especially, yeah, this is very percent. typical conditions. I expect that they're, they're a little bit better than we're used to seeing. Well, it's all about playing for the main game. It's all about building for the main game. And if you've got the resource to do it, you have to do it. Uh, because that, there's only one team. I know it's a cliche, but there's only one team that's going to win the 37th America's Cup in Barcelona, uh, Spain. Probably both going left, but I think we still have to go right. This is going to and we'll Apex. Ray Davies, uh, Stephen here at ACTV, mate. Uh, team right, look good in this race. Yeah, go, Stephen. Yeah, team's going uh, really well. Really awesome first beat there. Got off the line nice and clean and sailing some really nice modes upwind and just extending at the moment. Were they a bit cranky oh, after dropping, dropping dropping into the water at the start of race one? Yeah, they weren't happy with that sort of unforced error there. Um, but bounced back really well. Really well. And, uh, yeah, it's just great to be doing some racing and seeing um, how tough it is out here. A lot of boats falling off foils, and uh, it's just all about making the least number of mistakes. Yeah, Ray, uh, Glenn, Ashby yeah, Ray Glenn Ashby here. Yeah. Mate, just uh, seeing Dalton's face there behind you. Uh, no pressure on the boys to get a couple of good ones on the board, surely. Yeah, no pressure. Dalton's, it's never a must-win regatta. So Glenn is just saying uh, no pressure after that first race, right? Do you want to have a chat, Glenny? <laughs> I think I'll leave you with it, mate. Oh, hang on, I might be stitched up here. Oh, oh g'day, Dot. So, uh, you, you would have been no no fever at all uh, after that uh, first start. Mate, it's hard to have fever when you're a kilometre behind. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we, we, know, we, know, we know the movie, we've seen it before, but fantastic conditions out here at the moment, and I'm glad that everyone's been able to get out on the water and get some great racing. It certainly makes it a lot easier for us to talk about the racing when the boats are all foiling around and uh, not drifting around, so fantastic racing out here at the moment. Well done for uh, putting it on here, mate. 
Yeah, no thanks. So we're seeing nine and a half on the boat at the moment up the course. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's perfect and it sort of builds you know, a little bit more tomorrow and then a lot more on um, Friday and Saturday. So, you know, I think the wind's going to be great for the regatta. Yeah, Grant, Stephen here, when you, when you looked at this uh, venue, did you know how good it was going to be? Because everybody's been welcomed so beautifully. There, there's nothing has been spared and it really is a delightful course to watch. Yeah, well, no, certainly we did a wind study when we looked at it initially for the, you know, bringing the main event, America's Cup here. So we knew the conditions were like this. And in fact, it's probably at the lighter end of what you normally get here today. And we'll start to see tomorrow it, it pick up a little bit and then more Friday, Saturday. So so it, it is really unknown um, in the sailing conditions to most yachtsmen. They just have no idea how good it is here. And this is showcasing that to the world of just what an amazing venue this is for, for, for sailing. I've got, got one final, final question for you. How satisfied were you and the team knowing this AC40 was uh, awarded boat of the year? Yeah, no, I, I think for the designers and the team, it's great. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a new class. We hope that it will develop. There's, I think there's 12 sold now. Um, and that, you know, come the end of this America's Cup, it'll move on into the next America's Cup, but also grow with private owners and become a replacement class for, you know, the, everyone wants to go foiling now. And it's a lot cheaper to sail and, and maintain than, say, a TP52. So we hope that it, it grows into a successful class, not just within the America's Cup. All right, mate. Have a great day. We'll leave you alone. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Here's Grant Dalton, uh, the man, the boss of America's Cup 37 as the Emirates Team New Zealand, the defender, have already uh, rounded the bottom mark and heading away. And they, they look to be in control too, don't they? Look, they're sailing the boat nicely at the moment. As we see, only one manoeuvre can make the difference between getting the chocolates or uh, or not getting the chocolates, I'll say. But um, as we're watching a Linky Red Bull racing coming down here, these young boys are sailing this boat really, really nicely. You can see the work that they've put in not just themselves, but as a team, you know, picking the eyes out of what's important to do around the track in these boats. They're, they're sailing the boat well. I can definitely see some improvements of what we saw in Villanova. They'll be happy. And Lingi Red Bull Racing, second across the bottom mark. And that will be followed out the opposite attack by Luno Russa Prada Pirelli. Important to note here that uh, American Magic have uh, pulled themselves back in a way a respectable fourth. Yeah, look, as I mentioned earlier, I, I said it would be interesting to see how these guys dug their way back through the fleet. And that's a real showcase of, of a solid team that's actually able to chip their way back through and not actually stay at the back. So they're a strong team and it's how you deal with adversity that ultimately, um, you know, makes you get great results in the end. So really, really sailing the boat nicely and um, very interesting as they sail the boat up in here. We'll see, see what they can do. They're good at molding, aren't they? It's like they have quite a lot in their armory. Whatever the conditions, whatever position they can get in, they seem to be able to, you know, to cope with it and, and adjust everything. Yeah, they're sailing the boat nicely. That's no question about that. Well, I suppose it's also you see the quality of the the sailors in these boats and their ability to react to how quickly they react and not allow the the, the situation to get the better of them. And that and that's where the elite sit above the rest dealing with pressure um you know is a massive one and, and dealing with pressure in the good the bad and the ugly uh situations and being cool calm and collected and actually delivering that methodically is, is very important and that's exactly what these guys are doing they're sailing really nicely and keeping chilled yeah. keeping cool yeah, we're, we're still sailing right the boat well okay let's stand by Two, so one, the fleet down. running along the foreshore here in Jeddah, the waterfront known as their Corniche. There's a huge race village that has been built. There's an opening ceremony not too far. We can see just behind the, yeah, that good, wonderful good. shot is the, the floating mosque. There's a, a real, well, it is a real touristy point. The, the, one of the big things happening here in, in Jeddah is that they are really going to push tourism in the future. What are we? It's right face. Yeah, looking on board. Straight fastest. Looking on board here with Nathan Outridge and Blair Tug. I will. 
sailing the boat up here beautifully. You can see Good some of the buttons now. being pressed there. They're the right height targets that the boys will be playing with on the way up there. Two, Setting up for a manoeuvre now. We'll just watch them through the manoeuvre here. So Pete Searing from Tallulah there That's as they're entering that mark, which is keeping it nice and tight because you can simply That's not see the mark when you're on the windward side of the yacht when you get close. So keeping it accurately from the leeward side. And there. Emirates Team New Zealand on their way home to a very strong win Five at this point in time in practice race right number two. Matt Narridge looks like he's out for a Sunday drive. Uh, Nathan generally looks like that when he's in the car or whether he's on the boat, to be honest. He's a pretty cool, calm and collected character, but um, sitting on the opposite side of the boat, Pete Burling on the handlebars is also like that. So, seeing a relatively close cross here with Alinghi and Red Bull, a Luna Rossa Red Bull racing. Luna Rossa, you know, in a pretty solid position there. Alinghi not far behind them there. Luna Rossa will be looking at accelerating quickly to uh, get around the mark. It's a quite close racing here for second and third, so some, some great racing on the table here at the moment. So coming to the top gate for the final time, it will be a Lingley Red Bull Racing, followed closely uh, by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. You can see at the top of your screen, Ineos Britannia sitting in P4, P5, excuse me. And then you can see the Americans who have come back nicely after splashing down well before the start here in race number two. And they will head over to that left hand mark as you see on the screen. Yeah, not a lot that American Magic can do from here. They've, they've done a great job to sort of get back to where they are in, in fourth, sailing the boat nicely, and it really is just a bit of a procession for them at the moment down to the bottom. But on board here with Emirates Team New Zealand as they're coming downwind, sitting on about 30 knots of boat speed in what is not a whole lot of breeze. Look at the lead. <laughs> eight over 800 metres. I mean, if you're sailing one of the other boats, if you're a competitor to the Kiwi outfit, what are you thinking right now? They're certainly sailing the boat well, and you know, once they do get their nose clear, um, you know, Andy Maloney, Blair Chook, uh, Pete, and Nate, you know, they've done a fair few hours together on these boats, so um, you know, they're not going to make too many mistakes once they get their nose clear coming into the finish here. Emirates Team New Zealand uh, storming to a win in Fleet Race number two, a practice race, mind you. It all starts tomorrow. The little big show, you might say, as they cross the line and they after their first race where they really did struggle and didn't get off the line. That's how you respond. And Emirates Team New Zealand with the win. And uh, Peter Lester, that was a nice comeback when you think what happened in race one. Yeah, and I think the, the key moment for me was when they managed to wriggle out from underneath Ineos up leg one. Uh, and, and then on leg two, the, the second moment was when Nathan Outridge actually picked a little cellar wind coming down towards the uh, Jetty Yacht Club and he just encouraged Burling to sa sail on into that cell. They carried it down to the bottom mark and really that just created a quite a big buffer for Emirates Team New Zealand to take this one out. But impressive performance. They, they certainly, when they get their nose out in front, um, they look to have plenty of pace. They, they are uh, one of the faster boats in terms of trimming and sail coordination and the crew work in, in these one design, one design AC40s. They are the benchmark. I tell you what, Peter, though, that when you see who's coming home second and third, these are, these are a, a mini statement by Lingi Red Bull Racing and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Oh, with, without, absolutely, and uh, I'm just looking out the window as a Lingi come over the come through over the line so that, that's a tidy performance and and the, the really this race was between um Alinghi red bull racing and luna rossa prada pirelli that they were felt they were quite locked together um and then american magic will be next as they come through really they trail by about uh, 10 lengths 12 lengths behind uh, luna rossa prada pirelli okay but a good okay, save, you might say, by American Magic. Good save. Yeah, I think they'll be encouraged, don't you? I mean, they managed to, to keep the, the distance tight. They've got pace, they've got modes. Uh, you know, they've got a lot going on. 
Yeah, I'll be a little bit disappointed. Just to pick there. up, uh, Stephen, uh, I look up the course and uh, you'll notice that um, Orient Express Racing are not racing anymore. I, I don't quite know what's gone on. Uh, they're rafted up alongside their, their support boat up towards the top mark, so um, that's why they are not in the picture at the moment. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate that. As we see, Ineos Britannia, winner, unofficial winner in race number one. Practice racing, so it doesn't really matter, but we'll, they had a penalty on them on, across the line. But they do come across the line and finish this one in fifth position, Ineos Britannia. So let's head on to the winning boat in this second fleet race that practiced great. And that, of course, is Emirates Team New Zealand and... Peter Burling, you'd be happy after the, um, the less than happy start in race one. Yeah, we made a bit of a mistake in that start in race one, but um, I guess that's what practice days are for. Uh, find a close loop, mate. Uh, and, yeah, just uh, excited to be out racing. Really nice breeze. Uh, Nathan, uh, I, I think you're, I think you're lis listening in, Nathan. You look pretty relaxed out there, that, that race, mate. Uh, that one was a little bit easier than the one before. We kind of messed up that start. You got me here? Yeah, that one was a bit easier. Better start. Um, and yeah, once you're clearer of the fleet, things get much easier. So uh, yeah, happier with that race for sure. Oh, nice work, Nath. Uh, Glenn Ashby here. Glenn, you you're actually, um, you and Andy are both obviously doing the sail trimming on board. Can you just run us through what it's like for you guys on a day like today, just where it's sort of just enough to get foiling properly. And, uh, and actually, how, how, how are you guys going sailing around the track? Well, it was a little bit nicer than that one, uh, rather than the race before when we were in everyone's gas, the whole race track. But uh, yeah, wind's just above the kind of situation where you really have to eke everything out to keep the boat on the foils. That, that makes it a little bit nicer, but yeah, yeah, very even speed between all the boats. So that means you, uh, yeah, you have to just make sure you're accurate and, and keeping the boat in the groove the whole way around and manage to do that nicely there. All right, thanks, Dad. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll let you get ready for fleet race number three. So Emirates Team New Zealand Day getting the win in fleet race number two as we just remind you how it all unfolded. And a <laughs> that's not a bad lead, not a bad win. A minute and 24 seconds, Shirley, but uh, you talked about it. And uh, when you look at the numbers, numbers tell the story in this one. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli taking the third position on the podium, we shall say. American Magic followed by Ineos Britannia and Orient Express Racing, who we are unsure as why uh, they stopped racing, but uh, they didn't complete the course. So let's take a look at the start and feet race number two. Yeah, the French getting, you know, off the line reasonably well. Luna Rossa looking really good at pulling the trigger just a fraction early and getting an OCS penalty, which was a little disappointing for them. Coming into gate one, Emirates Team New Zealand just edging out in front of Alinti Red Bull Racing and the rest of the fleet coming in hot on their heels. Oh, the French were doing so well and what an unforced error here. I mean, perhaps gear damage, we've heard they've had to pull out. And Emirates Team New Zealand really extending away in the second half of the race there, getting their nose clear and ultimately coming down to the finish line, sailing the boat beautifully and having nearly a 900 metre lead as they cross the finish line. They didn't have to look behind, did they? <laughs> that was that. So, and they cross the finish line, Emirates Team New Zealand make up for a poor start in race number one and they do the job in style. Well over a minute ahead of the next one. But what was the key moment? The OCS start. Yeah, look, Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, only just over the line there, about a metre over the line with the boundary of the boat there. Super disappointing for them. That was going to be a cracking start, but they just pulled the trigger a fraction early, so disappointment for them, but a great effort for where they, uh, where they ended up. They'll, they'll take a lot out of that. But again, we talk about margins, and that was the narrowest of margins. So let's uh, summarise race number two, fleet race number two, as we look at the Jetty Yacht Club and Marina, which makes a beautiful picture. Wow, Emirates Team New Zealand, they kept it simple. Only 15 manoeuvres, slightly better top speed and 99.9% uh, .9 right side. Good work. So that is fleet race number two. Settle back, because we're not too far away from number three, live on the Red Sea from Jetta.
You know, the America's Cup's always been synonymous with secrecy. Traditionally, a teams go to great lengths to keep their boats under wraps, but the AC40 is different. The multi-purpose, one-designed boat will be also used next year in the youth and women's America's Cup campaigns. So look, there's nothing to hide. Here's Emirates Team New Zealand's Nathan Outridge to unlock some of the secrets of these flying monohulls. Welcome to the Emirates Team New Zealand base. Normally cameras aren't allowed inside these bases at all, but we thought today is a perfect opportunity to show everyone the AC40, the one design boat that's been raced for the Youth and Women's Cup, all the World Series events, and all the teams have got one of these as well. So this is the AC40 on the deck. Big traveller here at the back. We've got the whole control system sitting on the deck for the mainsail. The cockpit here, you've got two seats. And interestingly on this boat, the drivers or the skippers or the helmsmen or whatever you want to call them sit in the front. Normally they'd be sitting right at the very back of the boat, but it's a pretty unique situation. The steering wheel's right in front of you and you've got an unobstructed view out the front of the boat. Two stations for phones here. This side here is all about like the performance you know how fast the boat's going, all your settings, and over here you'll have all the information about the race course. It'll tell you where you are on the race course, how long to the start, how long to the boundary, and I'm hoping we'll get to a point where they'll start displaying the other boat on there too, so you can really get a good idea of where you are because it's, you can't see through any of these sails, so you have no idea where your competition is. In terms of button and switches, we'll start on the outboard side first, so you've got a board up button and a board down button. The trim plus, trim minus buttons, that's all to do with the autopilot system. So you can set all the settings and the boat will sail itself in terms of its flight. In our test boat, we have the ability to use the autopilot and manually, and I can guarantee you 100%, the one design boat is significantly easier to sail. But having said that, we still have to put inputs into the boat. So we still have to decide what is the sink target, how much ride height do we have, what is the trim of the boat, and where do we put the cans? It might sound like it sails itself because it's got an autopilot, but there's still a lot of human inputs that need to happen to make the boat work. On the other side here is all to do with the foil. And if you ever push a wrong button, you can easily just hit the cancel button here and that just freezes the boat and you can redo your commands. So the final thing, and probably the most important thing to look at on this boat, is what we call the ultrasonic. It's what senses how the boat's flying. It's shooting a beam down at the water, and it's sensing how far the boat is off the water. And that's what makes the AC-40 fly. As you can probably see right now, this boat's getting packed up as we speak. So, hope you enjoy the tour, and uh, we'll see you up there. The city of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. That's not a big go-kart track, that's a Formula One track. And what you're seeing on the water of the coast of Jeddah are smaller Formula One cars in the form of the AC40s here in the second America's Cup preliminary regatta. The big Formula One cars will be put on show in September, October next year in Barcelona, Spain. In fact, they'll even be in August for the third America's Cup preliminary game when all these teams will showcase their brand spanking new Generation 2 AC75s and they will be monsters that will go incredibly quickly but look at this what a picture it is Jetty Yacht Club and Marina we had the opportunity to meet uh, Tofi the harbour master yesterday very protective about his babies and what are his babies 
the marine life. The turtles and all the fish in there told us a little bit of a story about some fishermen that weren't supposed to be doing that. Gave them a telling off. He said, I will always protect my babies. And I thought it was beautiful looking after his children, the, the sea life here in the Red Sea, which is an incredibly warm, warm area. And uh, it, it really is. The, the welcome, honestly, has been, is, has been overwhelming. Uh, some of us were fortunate enough to go to the, the home of the chairman of the uh, Saudi F Sailing Federation last night, Mr. Hassan Al Kabani. And again, we, we were involved in some culture and it was really, really fun. And it was uh, quite enlightening. But we'll move on. Look at American Magic, winner of race, race one. And uh, they are one of the teams to keep an eye on. I mean, Ben Subinaz, he said it's American Magic and Emirates Team New Zealand, the teams that are probably uh, a dash ahead of everybody else. And Tom Slingsby. Talk to me about Tom Slingsby. What makes him so good? Yeah, look, Tom's uh, grown up in a, in a lovely country. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> Stephen is probably the, the first thing. But uh, no, look, Tom, you know, Zealand, yeah. he's, he's, an absolute, uh, he's an absolute sportsman, you know, growing up playing various sports, very, very good tennis player. I've ultimately got into, got into sailing and, you know, sailing against his co-helmsman Paul Goodison over the years those guys had some absolute ding-dong battles you know through their Olympic laser sailing Paul and, and Tom together I think you know battled, battled it out over many years and I think probably pushed each other to limits that they probably didn't think were possible even sailing against themselves and the fact that they're actually sailing together now utilizing those years of experience pushing each other in the laser now they can do it on the same boat and that, that year those years of experience will absolutely pay big dividends as they move forward so a wealth of experience and knowledge on that boat well we, well we do have to talk about another australian because i want to talk about the addition of nathan outridge to emirates team new zealand we saw him taking us through the ac40 uh, what has he added to the team in your mind shirley these Aussies that they get everywhere. <laughs> well, we do have to say that Nathan's wife is a, is a Kiwi and he does live in New Zealand, so he is he is Kiwi. But he, to me, he was the perfect fit. Uh, he has trained and raced against Pete Burling and Blair Took for you know the last decade. He's also been the skipper of his own America's Cup team. He, you know, he was involved in Artemis and the Bermuda Cup, and so he brings. He brings a wealth of experience, and he's such a, a phenomenal natural relaxed sailor and we hear that when we I mean it's lovely isn't it being able to eavesdrop you hear that he just takes it in his stride well well he's learned a lot he was uh, one of our co-commentators for the last America's Cup in Auckland so he's really learned that he, you know he's got to keep his game on point uh, when it comes to comms because he knows we're listening in you taught him everything you know <laughs> Steve. oh yes that's right good points Shirley yep chocolate bar on me tonight as we look at the bar of Emirates Team New Zealand as we get prepared for race number three. They won race number two. Uh, American Magic won race number one. Remember, this is practice racing. Tomorrow we are into it. Into it officially. Points will count. Ten for first, seven for second, five for third, then three, two, one. Eight fleet races and then the Two teams, quite simple, with the highest amount of points after the fleece race will go head-to-head -head in a one-off match race. And uh, with the conditions we are seeing right now, it is going to be a cracking weekend of AC40 racing. Yeah, look, it certainly is. You know, the, the forecast looking really good for the, for the weekend. A uh, little bit lighter possibly tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. The forecast has been changing back and forth. But what we generally have seen here is that we are seeing one or two knots more on the water close to the shore than what the forecasts have been saying. So that's a positive sign. And certainly the conditions here, looking at some of these images, are uh, absolutely beautiful. And on the water, really, really good, good fun and good, good sailing for the guys. Just speaking of on the water, Peter, I asked you about conditions for race two. Anything changed markedly for race three? If anything, it looks a little bit more settled. Um, I think the wind has gone back to the right, just a click, looking up the track. Uh, it looks more even across the course. Now, the good news is uh, Orient Express Racing are back. They, I understand they had a hydraulic problem in that previous race, and they pulled out. But uh, they've rectified that, and they are back down in the starting box, and they will be starting in race three. How competitive do you think these race starts have been of the, the two you've seen, Peter? Um, it, I think the, the, set, the, the first one, it was noticeable that Emirates Team New Zealand got their timing wrong and they got caught out. And we can see how 
uh, damaging that can be. For me, in the second race, I thought it was a, a quite a good uh, line-up. Um, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli were slightly over, and that sort of opened up the opportunity for the New Zealanders really to, to push quite hard forward. Midway up that first beat, I thought that a, a defining moment was when the New Zealand sailed out underneath um, uh, ben Ainsley and Ineos Britannia. I thought that was a, a bit of an arm wrestle that went the New Zealanders' way. But the, the starts are absolutely crucial because if you can get into clear air and find yourself a lane, they can press a little bit harder on the foil and, and push forward hard. So um, that, you know, the pinning start can be really beneficial if you get time on distance and, and the split tack start option to go off on port over towards the Jetty Yacht Club can also be very strong if you can get in clear air. So I think being able to get in clear air after the start is really beneficial. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Uh, great observations there. Just looking at the wind rows here on the water, the direction just slightly north of west there. Not far off being on shore, but um, fluctuating between sort of seven and ten knots. Really, really nice conditions there for the boats to be sailing in. So it'd be really interesting as we sort of count down to three minutes now for the start of this race three here in Jeddah. Yes, so I went to New York American, Mag American Magic at race number one, Emirates Team New Zealand. Uh, the defender and the 37th America's Cup winning race number two. Will we get a third different winner? We shall wait and see. We are less than 15 seconds away to a confirmation of racing to go from the race director's team. And then we will be all go and lining up for another fleet race start in number three. This is the race committee. The course for race three is course six, course six. The axis is 295, length is 0.9. Good luck. It's interesting, Stephen, as the wind has dropped, you see them all setting up above the line, just trying to keep, I guess, clear air. Uh, it's so dangerous to be in the bottom of the box, getting all the bad air off the other boats. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Shirley. Clear air is absolutely critical um, in the setup to the start here. Sailing the boat around fast, you're really wanting to keep the pace on here. It's almost like a rolling start in a NASCAR race. Really, really important. Lunarossa Prada Pirelli need to get going here. They are only 1 minute 45 seconds away from the start. So very important that they get the boat on the foils. The rest of the fleet foiling here, sailing in clear air. You see Luna Ross and Prada really in the background, straight to get up. They, they, do they look like they're going to get up? I think they'll dig the boat out, but they could potentially be late here. So all these manoeuvres pre-start in these conditions, extremely important. Just listen to some of the comms of how important it is to keep the speed building here. Really, really key. But I still think it's all about being There's a few people struggling like Magic's off the foil on our hip. Okay, let's just get up early so we've got good pace. Coming up slowly. Uh, uh, definitely jiving here with Ineos. 30 pin. What time are you thinking? Just jive now. Uh, I think. I think we'll past, them, eh? past them, I think. Yeah. 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 Quite early. That might be off the floor. We're on pin time now. Can't make it. Let's go here. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, happy to roll away. And my wheel's still here. Happy to go on the one. Nine, 35, the killing five of the pin. Lay line's not that far away. Okay, okay turning, turning up here. Up hard. It's killing high here, Gibby. Copy. Okay, got you now just racing at the pin. Oh, American Roll Magic there, there in big Eight trouble there on the start line. They're going to be a sitting duck. Coming up to 15 seconds before the start here. Emirates Team New Zealand, the French team, Ineos Britannia, all in really good shape here. Luna Ross are looking at doing a port start here. They're going to have to dip. They're going to have to dip. Ineos, not sure whether they'll pull the trigger behind or have to reach. Port start. We are in go in fleet race number three with everything happening on the start line. This is the OCS USA restart penalty. OCS USA restart penalty. You're going really well on the guys. Beautiful start from Ben Ainsley's Ineos Britannia. You know, they, they led it back, they clear air, and they just nailed the time and distance. You could hear Giles Scott doing the countdown uh, the whole time. Very accurate start. Three races, three, three boats, can't make it across the start line. <laughs> 
very, very tricky in these conditions, but um, the British coming to the uh, boundary here, they'll be tacking. Very interesting to see what the French do, tacking as well underneath. May have just left that tack a little late there. Just digging themselves out of trouble there. Very even fleet here at the moment. Well, considering that Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli were in, in trouble at the start and were basically in displacement mode, they now they've uh, got themselves back into this race. Nice numbers. Attention, tour. Number three. Nice, sir. Kiwi's tag, we're crossing. Good numbers, no need to be slow. Copy. Score 24, bottom for now. Nice. Good uh, 10 right now. Good, good pressure in head. Really, really good comms there on board. Ineos, Britannia, Ben, Giles and the aero team doing a great job there, moting the boat beautifully. Alinghi Red Bull racing though, sailing the boat well as well. Really, really nice heel control heading out to the right-hand boundary. If you're a young sailor watching this, this is a masterclass, listening to the, the comms and the decision-making between the best sailors on the planet. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yep. You almost feel like you're on board the boat sometimes, don't you? It's fantastic Great audio coming building. off, something that we haven't had as clear, I don't think, ever before. And so many hey, good conversations coming. going on. It's great to listen to it. Sorry. Let's go into the water, Pete. What do you make of that start in the sort of first upwind beat? Well, I, I think as we talked about it pre-start, the ability to actually find a lane off the start to push down on the on the sails and push the boat forward, that's what we saw Ben Ainsley do coming off on starboard, and he's, he's done uh, a, a really good job of that. But going off on port was um, Alinghi Red Bull Racing, and they did the same, and they once you get your nose forward and in clear air, you can... You can push a little bit harder on the jib and on the foil. And uh, the, the two boats that are that are first and second at the moment, they really have uh, put that back to their beautiful starts. The, the, the other boat that's impressing me after having diff hydraulic difficulty in race two are the French. They, um, they've certainly got plenty of pace and they, as they cross Emirates Team New Zealand, approaching first mark. A really great job from the Lingi Red Bull Racing there. Sailed a beautiful beat, just leading in the Ospretania around the mark there. Super tight mark rounding there. The French taking the left turn at the top. They'll be in pretty good shape heading downwind as well, followed by Emirates Team New Zealand. All really tightly bunched at the top there. Great racing. So the majority of the fleet heading on the downward leg, downward leg that will complete the leg one. And they are just tight. This is what we were hoping for, but the conditions like this tight feet racing, and we are not being disappointed. Disappointed will be uh, American Magic. That's uh, two races in a row, didn't get off the start. Yeah, they'll be a little frustrated, uh, the American Magic boys. They've been sailing the boat really nicely and just letting themselves down just a little bit with a couple of their pre-start manoeuvres. Um, yeah, that'll be a bit of a frustrating day for them, but they'll bounce back from that. Um, they're a solid team. Emirates Team New Zealand, sailing the boat nicely again. I think they're the benchmark for sailing the boat smooth downwind. Their heel control from Andy Maloney and Blair Chook, I think, is exceptional. They are threading the eye of the needle. It'll be really interesting to see what's happening. This is the umpires. Penalty Switzerland, relative France. Ouch, is what you'd say. Yeah, not 100% sure what, what happened there. Possibly a boundary penalty there by the Swiss. Not 100% sure. Didn't quite pick up what happened there. We'll have to have a replay on that to find out what happened. One observation I, I'm making on this downwind is uh, how expensive jibes are. It just seems in this uh, sort of jobly sea state, you, you watch the jibe, the boat slows down, but more importantly, there's such a big angle change. And uh, we've got this group over on the on the right, Ineos the umpires, and Red Bull and Emirates Team New Zealand on the left. France. We'll just monitor, you know, the, the, the loss and gain through the jive. Yeah, it's quite marked. It could be as much as 60 or 70 metres that you lose in a jive. Yeah. 
three, two, driving now. Slow down. Let's keep pushing. All these manoeuvres extremely critical coming down to the bottom of the course. Boats losing around about sort of eight to nine knots of boat speed uh, in the jibe, so definitely costly, but all boats doing this. We have a second penalty relative to France, 150 metres behind France. So Alinghi getting penalised there even further. Um, they're going to have to lose a lot of ground here to get behind France. And Lingy Red Bull Racing will uh, mark around the bottom mark for the first time, but they are still having to serve up a penalty of 150 metres behind, which we would suspect will be Enios Britannia, who round the mark to Do you think they're close to touching down some of these boats as they come around the marks, aren't they? Or is that just the what, how they're managing it? Oh, unfortunately, the French there just coming around a two board round up, getting the board out there, touching down. Big loss from the French. That's going to be really, really difficult there to get going again. That'll be that'll be a frustrating one for them. It's going to be a long way to the finish line from there. Well, that's a third touchdown, surely, and one in each race. It's pretty light. There's a lot of bad this is air. The it's getting So, if you don't take your penalty, you've got to take your medicine, haven't you, Glenn? It, you know, the umpire just kept piling them on. They have like three penalties. And for Olinky Red Bull Racing, they're out. Yep. Umpire Richard Slater's got his big black stick out and whacked it right over the head of Olinky Red Bull Racing there. So, so it was a relative penalty called by Richard Slater. Olinky Red Bull Racing and. Foreign Express race. Yeah, I can't really see what has happened there uh, in that in that situation. So it'll be interesting to hear from the umpires post race to sort of see what the situation actually was there. So we'll get to the bottom of that, no doubt. But some really tight racing here coming into the top mark, which is what ultimately we've been wanting to see. So Ineos Britannia there, right up the exhaust pipe of a Lingy Red Bull Racing, and um, that's great to see. Boys all doing a really good job. So confirmation from Richard State of the Umpire, disqualification of Alinghi Red Bull Racing out of fleet race number three as we're on leg number three of six. So the current leader now is uh, Enios Britannia. Yeah, Alinghi Red Bull Racing and Enios Britannia very, very close here. Obviously sailing to opposite sides of the course at the moment. The Really too tight there to actually tack and affect the other boat. You lose too much in the manoeuvre. So the only option there is to really split and keep sailing the boat well, hoping that you're going to uh, a nice side of the course for pressure and angle on the way back. A really close cross coming up here between Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli and Emirates Team New Zealand. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli having to put the bow down. Dip in behind. Oh, really tight tack there with Emirates Team New Zealand. I think they're just clear enough ahead Emirates Team New Zealand to stay clear. And um, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli having to sail fast to keep their air clear. How impressive has it been? You know, how much the Kiwis have got back into this game. Meter by meter. They have, they've chipped away and they're not afraid to clamp on the tight manoeuvre and that shows really, really good confidence in your boat handling to be able to throw a manoeuvre in marginal conditions and make it stick. So they're sailing confidently and uh, that's what you need to do in these sort of races. You've got to, you've got to sail with confidence. Little faster boat. I call on more drop. Copy. Uh, happy at about five. You don't need to go. Okay, stand by. Happy? They haven't gone. They go now. Just allow. Oh, and a really tight tack there from Ineos Britannia, forcing a Lingi Red Bull Racing there to tack. If a Lingi Red Bull Racing can lay the right turn here, they will make a huge gain versus Ineos Britannia. Shame they're disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting situation there. That's uh, a really interesting way that actually played out there. So that'll be something that all the teams will be reviewing quite closely after this race uh, in the post-race analysis. Ben Ainsley, no interest in the left-hand mark. They're, they're really loving that right-hand side of the course. Yeah, that was a really interesting decision there to, uh, to tack where they did. So um, you know, they really sacrificed quite a bit of ground there. So that was, a, that was an interesting call. Emirates Team New Zealand rounding the mark. They'll round the mark in second position. 
If, even if you see a Lingy Red Bull racing up ahead, they have been disqualified by umpire Richard Slater, as Shirley quite rightly said, not taking their medicine. We'll talk to potentially Richard after to get a clearer understanding of that penalty, which was their relativity to France. And we, we think we figured that one out pretty quickly, but it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. Shall we go before now? We're shaking our fingers, yes. hands like they go, hmm. But Richard will make it very clear, very precise, as Mr. Go. Slater, Two. as we see Orient Express Racing, uh, sitting in position Excellent. four here yeah, in fleet race number three on the Red Sea in Jeddah. Now we're down to one. Ah, uh, now I just wonder whether the big thing is they around the market head downwind at Orient Express Racing. Three touchdowns in three races, one a race. Yeah, look, it's, um, you know, you only need one touchdown to ruin your race, and, uh, you know, they've had sort of three consecutively, so it is tricky conditions, but um, I think really at the end of the day, trying to pull off a difficult manoeuvre in marginal conditions puts you under massive pressure, so you have to absolutely execute well if you're going to pull those off, and unfortunately, they haven't executed them quite as well as I'm sure they would have liked. You'd prefer those high percentage, low percentage moves. Correct. It's all about playing the percentages, and those high-risk manoeuvres often don't play out as well as you'd like in those conditions. Oh, so Ben looks pretty comfortable. Goggles are up. Nice, up nice line, day out on the Red Sea. Yeah. Cup of tea, anyone? In He's in the, the lead. Balls. He can lift the goggles. Yeah, it's a good indication that Ben's yeah. comfortable when he can take the goggles off. Like and um, as the sun gets a little bit lower um, and there's a little bit of spray glare on your goggles, sometimes it is nice to uh, have a clean set. And they're certainly enjoying a clean set of goggles at the moment as they come in and jive here, heading down to the bottom of the course. Rob Wilson, the coach of Ineos Britannia, is uh, watching his team uh, comfortable at the moment with about a 70 metre lead. Uh, what do you make of this race, Rob? Um, it, yeah, they've kept it uh, pretty clean, um, which was good. You know, they had a good start. They were fast um, and just, you know, kept it pretty simple, keeping clearer. And um, I think, you know, once you're out in the front, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot easier than when you're in the pack. Rob, they look at a different team to the team we were watching back in Spain a month ago. What, what's changed? Um, you know, we, we've had a lot, a lot more time in the boat, um, and the guys are a lot more comfortable with it. You know, there's still, uh, there's still a long way to, to go. There's still more improvement to come for sure. Um, but you know, certainly, uh, certainly a bit more comfortable with this, uh, with this boat. Well, they're in the, the first position right now. Here's hoping uh, for your sake they, they stay right there. Thanks for your time again, Rob. Yeah, thanks very much. Emirates Team New Zealand running and heading up on their upwind leg, uh, sitting in second position. There is not much of a margin now between Emirates Team New Zealand and Ineos Britannia as Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli round the bottom mark as well. Let's take go on board Luno Rosa, see how this uh, this new Hellman crew were uh, getting to grips with their AC40 ahead of the, the start of real racing tomorrow. Nice one, guys. Coming well, up. Oh, yeah, there's been... Driving oh, on the port side. Okay, nice. 19-year-old Marco yes, Grandone. Can you imagine 19 this is years the old? We are moving the windward gate, shifting the course axis to 288. We're getting late in the day, Stephen. Eight, eight. The wind is shifting around. Remember it's getting puffier. A little tricky. Oh, Orient Express Racing, rounding the mark and heading and following the fleet upwind. Stephen, Team New Zealand uh, have identified that uh, left-hand shift and we heard the course access, access change and that has brought Team New Zealand right back onto the transom of Ineos Britannia. So this will be interesting to see how this plays out, the upwind leg and then one downwind leg to the finish. But what uh, has impressed me with Ben Ainsley and Ineos Britannia, really, I go back to the start. Two races today, they've started down towards the pin end, immediately into clear air, and I've hit their straps early in the, in the racing. Uh, that's not what we saw in Villanova, and I see that as a big improvement. Just watching the boats come up here to the top, it's it's really you know a Lingy Red Bull racing have actually uh, stretched out a little bit from what we've seen before. They're sailing the boat quite well here and enjoying some clear air up the top as well. You know they're, they're actually sailing the boat really really nicely here and Ineos just slipping back a little bit there. Um, Going to be really interesting. This next cross in about. 30 to 40 ah, seconds time as Emirates Team New Zealand tack on top of yeah. Luna Rosso Prada Pirelli again for the second time, making the Italians' life difficult. 
they may be able to just hold there and live, but it will be difficult. But um, interesting to see how Ineos Britannia come back across the fleet here. A tough position for Luna Rossa Prati Pirelli as they leave our tack right underneath Ineos. So this is uh, getting quite spicy in the top third of the course. Going left here, massively left on softer. They might come back quite strong if that's still out there. Want to put a little bit of fat in the lay line for a dip if you need. Yes. Attacking in three. Good game. One out two. Keep playing these boys. One. Turning. Yep. Early two. Put down. I see. Nice tack there on Emirates Team New Zealand. Just ahead of bow on bow, but I think by the time they intersect, it's going to be very, very close here to see how tight they are. Very interesting to see what happens here. Three boats heading to the top mark for the last time. Emirates Team New Zealand, Enios Britannia, Luno Rosa, Prada Pirelli. Who gets advantage going to the top mark? Working up here, Kevin. Your will be two. My will. One. Advantage, Ineos Britannia. Turning. Oh, it was tough for the Kiwi team. Also, they also had to get, they had to go behind the Italians. How tight was that on the post? Really, Mark, really, really close. Close. Rosa Prati, yeah. Emirates Team New Zealand. Really, really close racing there. But Alingi Red Bull Racing sailing a beautiful beat and getting around the top mark and actually extending on their way down when they're the young team of Alingi doing a great job on board there to just keep their nose clear and pull off some nice manoeuvres. But there is a real battle going on just behind them with three boats. So going to be very interesting this, this downwind. Just a reminder, we are only racing with five boats officially in this fleet race, with Alingi Red Bull Racing having been disqualified for not getting behind uh, and being double double tapped, you might say, uh, by by Richard Slater to 105 metres to get behind, and they ignored it, so he basically pulled the trigger and said, "Thanks, lads." Look at this again. Really, really, really tight manoeuvre there. That's a very difficult manoeuvre to do. A big dip, a big luff, and then straight into a bear away. Very difficult for manoeuvre there for Emirates Team New Zealand. Also, Luna Rossa there having to dip their way out. Also quite slow. Both boats working really hard to keep the boats on the foils. Quite dramatic when you see it up close, isn't it? And how close it really is. And you, you're sitting on board. And you, you, you're gripping. I'm gripping the chair, sort of going with them. Yeah, great battle coming downwind here with Ineos Britannia, Emirates Team New Zealand, and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli not far behind here. Not much needs to change, and they'll be right back in the game again with Emirates Team New Zealand and Ineos Britannia. On the final downwind leg in this th third and final practice fleet race before we head into competition tomorrow here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And at the moment, the winner of the last race, Emirates Team New Zealand, has a small margin over Ineos Britannia. These next drives critical. Nice job. Good angle for the Bills. So now it's Enios Britannia sitting in P1, followed by Emirates Team New Zealand. Has the, have the young boys in their Ferrari of Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli got something? Can they chop, change a gear and run down Emirates Team New Zealand? Yep, they'll be getting a lot bigger in the rear view mirror of Nathan Outridge there, and Blair Turk sitting on the port side of the yacht. They won't be liking that. Very, very close bow on bow here with Enios Britannia. Great, great racing in these conditions. Luna Rossa, uh, excuse me, Alinga Red Bull racing across the line, but that's a, a zero for them, disqualified as we've said on a number of occasions. Who gets across the finish line first in fleet race number three? How tight will it be? Oh, super critical jibes here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Last jibe, Ineos Britannia probably have the margin. Do they? That's work, guys. Yes, Ineos Britannia get the win from Emirates Team New Zealand in fleet race number three. And finalising that podium will be Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. I've been with a 
rub of the ice and go, yeah, okay, that was tight, that was a goodie. Breathe a sigh of relief. What good racing. That is what we've been waiting for, Stephen. That was great. Yeah, I think it was. Ben looked like he was ready for a cup of tea and a lie down <laughs> after that one. So uh, well, well done to them and uh, great, great racing. Absolutely fantastic to watch. Waiting for uh, New York American Actually, Magic so to you know, cross the line in fourth position and then... The French. Let's go on board Enios Britannia, Ben Ainsley. You look relieved to have got that one out of the way, Ben. Bit of a rub of the eyes and thinking, OK, time for a cover, mate. Time for a cup of tea, yeah. It's a tricky day out here. Uh, Breeze is up and down a lot. Very difficult for all of the teams. We had a good, good first race, good last race, had a bit of a wobble, and the second race came off the foil. And you see, if you do that in this fleet, you're out the back. There's not really much way back in. So, yeah, it feel, feels like we've learned a lot from Villanova and still plenty of games to come. Ben, you look like a, a different boat. You have got options, way different to, to what it all looked like back in Spain. You know how confident are you now after today going into tomorrow? Certainly a little bit more confident than we were in Villanova and understanding the boat and, yeah, just the dynamics of the thing. You know, had very little time and it wasn't really our focus. So, yeah, um, good effort from the team. But, you know, it's, as you can see, it's racing super tight, so you can't afford to make any mistakes. And just try and keep pushing hard for tomorrow and the, all the way through to the next three days. Looking forward to it. All right. Appreciate appreciate the time, Ben. Uh, Go and uh, have a well-deserved break. Thanks. So, Enios pretend you get the win in a fleet race a number three. So, three different race winners on the final day of uh, practice. It uh, couldn't be better, could it? Look, I think uh, what we've seen today is uh, is been absolutely brilliant racing. You know, the three three different winners, lots of position changes, and I think the conditions here have really showcased how close the racing can be. You know, when you're sailing in, in nice breeze, so really, really impressive. And the big work on for Orient Express is just let's not touch down. <laughs> let's just not touch down three times, and once a race is just not good enough. Let's take a look back at the third fleet race and uh, just show you how this one unfolded. Mm. Yeah, looking at the boats coming off the start line here, you know, Ineos Britannia, a really solid start there, you know, 27 knots of boat speed coming off the line. Really, that ultimately set them up for a solid race, surely. Yeah, they wanted that spot and they owned it. Very, very tight racing coming into the top here. Olympia Red Bull Racing doing a really nice job just getting around the mark there in, in front, followed by the rest of the fleet. Ah, squeezing around there. Fantastic racing there. Great boat handling and skills and great communications from the leeward side of the yacht to get around the mark cleanly. Some tight crossing during the racing there. Really coming through. Obviously the communication side again there, one of the most important things in a nice dip. Well that battle between the Kiwis and the British continued, but right at the end with a beautiful dive, Ineos Britannia crossed the line. And here's our a key moment, look at this, this was uh, <laughs> Little Rossa Pride for Rally and Emirates team from New Zealand. Yeah, really, really close there. You can see the safety zones of the boats as they're coming into the top mark there. Really, really good racing. And Richard Slater's watching this. Uh, what did you make of that, Richard Slater? Yeah, g'day guys. Um, that one was just tight but fine. Uh, we had more fun on the first top mark rounding. Oh, I got it. We're going to have to ask you a question, Richard. But we're going to take a quick look at this one again because, in real time, it was it was dramatic to say the least. But can we can we once we can we take you back to the the French the French manoeuvre as well, at where you penalised uh, Alingi Red Bull Racing? You talked about relatively just watching this this great moment and it's great racing. You know, you'd be loving this, I know, Richard, with Emirates Team New Zealand Luna Rossa Prada apparently. But can you clarify the position on the the penalty on uh, Alingi Red Bull Racing and Orient Express Racing? please sure the decision at the time was that uh, the French certainly were right of way and uh, the GBR were the ones first in but GBR also needed room from the Swiss to keep clear of the French so sort of GBR ended up being the meat in the sandwich all right thanks for your time Richard appreciate that uh Busy day of racing as we get it gets real tomorrow but uh, they've all had plenty of practice and that's the most important thing
Let's just uh, remind you of the margins, a very tight winning margin. Third different winner on Fleet Race number three, practice day, final practice day for the second America's Cup preliminary regatta, three seconds. How about that? We don't mind that at all. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, followed by New York American Magic, Oryx Best Racing, and as we know, Alinghi Red Bull Racing. So if we were doing this correctly, uh, and there were points to be made on the practice. You'd have Emirates Team New Zealand currently in the first position. York America Magic 16. And Eos Britannia third on 15. Tied with Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. Alinghi Red Bull Racing on 14. And Orient Express Racing below. And this is what you can look forward to tomorrow. Those are local times. And this is when the points will count. So the points you saw were as if it was happening. But this is the real stuff tomorrow. Fleet race number one at 1.43, 2.23 it'll be fleet race number two and at three o'clock it will be fleet race number three. Who will win the Neom America's Cup preliminary gather in Jeddah? Well, we'll just have to wait and find out. I wondered what that was. It was undercover when we walked along the, the docks this morning. A rather large depiction of the America's Cup. How about that? Now that is impressive. <laughs> it certainly is. Um, you'll be able to fit the whole team inside that, I think, and um, maybe that one's uh, as important as winning the real thing. I don't know. It's certainly impressive, that's, that's for sure. Opening ceremony, uh, I believe, is tonight, as you see in the background, the, the AC40 just uh, with their support crews. Now, we'll be getting the sails down and thinking about uh, the real racing tomorrow. They've had plenty of practice. And when you t when you look at the race, let's break this racing down now. Shirley, first of all, standouts for you. Oh, the Kiwis, I mean, Unbelievable. <laughs> Still. Yeah, yeah, they have, they are so slick and slick and, and get out of trouble, can't they? They can just move forward in the fleet. Um, wow, it, the other teams will be analyzing that performance uh, for sure. Okay, so would I, would I be right in suggesting the big improvers would be Ineos? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could tell couldn't you by by Ben's face really so relieved that that actually they're playing the game they're back in it okay for you uh standouts Glenn look I was I was honestly impressed obviously with uh with, with the, the 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 Kiwis as well as any Os but for me I, I think you know for the amount of time that they've had on the boat the young guys on Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli did a fantastic job. They got the boat round the track cleanly. They were right there in the racing and they're only just off it. So they'll be the one to watch for me moving forward in the next couple wow, of Wow, OK, so it's the next three days. We put a tick beside Luna at Rosa Prada Pirelli. Onto the water with Peter Burling. Who were the big improvers for you, Peter? It's Peter Lester here, uh, Stephen. But yeah, the big improvers for me, it's probably, I think, given the problems they were having uh, early on with hydraulics, I thought the French showed the moments. Obviously, Emirates Team New Zealand are the benchmark, but from where Ineos Britannia were in in uh, Villanova, uh, they have certainly analysed and, and come up with a pretty effective game plan. Two races today, they started at the pin end and uh, they capitalised on that. Sorry, Pete. Maybe I was just giving you more credit than you calling you Peter Burling. My apologies. Absolutely. No, I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks, yeah. mate. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right. So there we have it. Uh, the practice is all over. All the thinking still needs to be done overnight. <laughs> it has been an amazing three days of practice racing where teams have learned more about themselves and how to, to fly these AC40s. And now tomorrow, here at Jeddah on the Red Sea, it gets real. Tomorrow, points will come into play. It's the NEOM America's Cup second preliminary gather. You will see it live around the world. Make sure you are a part of us right here in Jeddah.